We saw how much you guys like these Shane video, so here's what you do to get more videos. You're gonna like and subscribe to this video you're watching right now, and we'll be able to get you a lot more video content right here on YouTube at the Bonfire Radio. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for more videos. Like you and subscribe. Smash it. Yeah, it's smash, smash. I mean, pulverize it. I want you to jackknife power bomb yeah. that fucking like button. I want you to punch the like button with your penis. Punch it, and then take a fat shit on its chest. <laughs> really get into some deep kink. I could see maybe the allure of an immediate seeing of a vajazzled vagina, but when it's like, you know, missing things, like, you know. Sure. It's like the P being missing from an open sign yeah. on a pussy. Yeah. Seems yeah. like. Looks like an old motel sign, which is hotel. It says HBO. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, there it oh. is. Yeah, those rhinestones would hurt. And so, yeah, girls would do that for a hot minute. Really? And then it's going to. First of all, I think one of these things gets up in you. That's a problem. Yikes. That's a definite problem. It's a problem. Is it still offered? Is the, is the service still offered? Yeah. The jazzling, but uh, I couldn't imagine. I think if I pulled a girl's pants down or she pulled it and I saw that, I would th just too much attention to her pussy area in general. I'd be concerned about. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, sure. It's like you don't do this if you're not going to make sure several people see sure. it. <laughs> yeah. Not rolling the dice on that. Plus, yeah, when, you, yeah, plus yeah. when you come on it, you're gonna have to wipe it all the bejazzle off. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> gonna be load and fucking little fake rhinestones. And some poor maid's gonna have to. Is this worth money? You put Windex on it. Get them sparkling again. <laughs> if I think of a hotel maid saving, she has like a pouch of bejazzle fall-offs. Yes, she goes, one day I'll cash this in. And I'm be going rich to make a lot country. of money off the lady pussy. <laughs> Yeah, it does. It looks wrong. Yeah, if I got mine vajazzled, you wouldn't be able to see it. I'd have to pick up my <laughs> my gunt. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> your vajazzling would tuck underneath the, the, the base of your dick. I could have two words, but one you don't see. It really is the perfect word, the gunt, because that's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or what do they call it for a man? A fupa still, like a fat upper penis area. <laughs> no, that's the bummer part. Yeah. Is that you have like a gut on your dick that like. <sighs> Like flaps over an inch of it, mm -hmm. like a belly. <laughs> yeah, that's why laying on your that back. That inch was way too specific to know. It's just yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. you got it's three like, guys it's in like here. An inch and a quarter, guys. It really, <laughs> it, 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 it's cutting off about. I, I don't know. In my experience, <laughs> two one eighth, two one eighth inches off my. You, got, you get three guys in there with dick stomachs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really hides the inventory. I'll tell you that. It's like having frosted windows on a on a mattress store. But Bobby got me thinking, and he might not be wrong Deep about gush. this. <laughs> He might not be wrong about this. But I don't know about you, but uh, what I also, uh, what I have in gut, I lack in ass. So oh, I've always I had to, ass. I've always had to, I said, I got to do the belt like I'm going to shoot heroin into my ball bag. <laughs> <laughs> and like I'm looking for a vein so, to hold my pants up. And then I'm wondering if just the shaping I've done, you know, when people, like women wear like shapewear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Women wear those like corsets and stuff to make, and their bodies eventually start taking that oh, shape. Oh, your intestines start I wonder moving. if I pushed, I wonder if I pushed the fat of right in the middle down, down. to my fucking, like, I've, I've above started there. actually putting my belt over my <laughs> belly button no, and trying dude. to reverse it. You look like a DA. Dude, we'll know in three months. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look like Al Capone. Yeah, no, you look like a pu like public defender. That's always a public defender belt. Up in the middle. Goes, no, I got you. Let me just find these papers That's here. That's the guy who's going to lose the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He opens his briefcase. It's yeah. more sandwich than paper. Well, you're doing uh, seven to ten. Uh, counsel, well, let me see you in chambers, please. <laughs> well, are, you, are you over the belly? Are you... Uh, what are you at now? You, you probably the can't stomach? have that big of a belly at this point. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm on the belly. Sometimes under the belly. Because I'm at the belly button now. I go over the belly. Well, yeah. I, oh yeah. It's crazy. When I started yeah, losing weight, he takes it off. It looks like there's been yeah. a. He's been hogtied. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, there's <laughs> rope burn. Yeah. It is bad. My stomach should be holding up today's newspaper. It's, it's <laughs> ugly. Looks like somebody tried to saw you in half. Yeah, it's bad. Oh and, man, belt marks. On a guy. Dude, Ooh, I had so one not. time, I had surgery on my left hand, and I was maybe in eighth grade, and uh, we were leaving the hospital. My mom was driving me home, and I was an idiot. I should have brought, like, basketball shorts, but I wore jean <laughs> shorts. In. And then she had to, I couldn't, because I was in a sling, so she had to button my pants for me. Oh, and hot. she was like, I, I'm like, she's like, do you go over or under? I'm like, just uh, fucking button it, lady. Anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. Let's get, get this, this over, over with. with. <laughs> you well, made me. Back, <laughs> in the, back in the day, though, guys always went over. Over the belly button, like a gentleman, like a gentleman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a gentleman trick. You pull it up over your belly button, and that. But those guys, when they got naked, they never had the dick fat. No, no, they had the the belly went down to 
Yeah, the, they were all starving from the Depression, like the Jimmy Stewart era. They wear those high wool suit pants. But you know, I think you're right when they wear the belt up here. This is all then free hanging. Yeah, it's There's all no free pressure. hanging. Free so, hanging. so you're right. They got those big guts. Yeah. But the right above the dick is flat. We've trained our bodies to push our fat down right above our dick. Jacob, I feel like you have a question. <laughs> You know, I watch a lot of fashion videos. You guys wouldn't go, wouldn't go suspenders, suspenders, suspenders. I like you don't a mean suspender. that. I want to actually wear suspenders, but I know society would frown upon it. Yes, yeah, society. Think with your build, but, you could. As a fat guy, you can't. You got to be taking a pie to the face if you're putting suspenders on. <laughs> or, or you look like a barrel. Dude, there was a They're guy. They're supposed to. What was that guy's name, Bobby? You probably knew him a little bit. He floated around comedy for quite some time. He might still be around Bill something. But uh, he was a fat dude, and he wore suspenders, but he wore, like, the ones, like, it looks like you're actually getting ready to, like, do something at, like, Home oh, the, Depot. Oh, the cross yeah. strap yeah. all back. But, yeah, but it's also, ones. like, it's, like, it's like five like inches across. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're a lumberjack. Yeah. He's an iron worker. Like it a was, lineman for the county, yeah. Okay. It's like they were so strong, these <laughs> suspenders. I actually have suspenders. Uh, listen. I wear them in the winter. Up When I wear my snow pants, mm -hmm. I have to wear suspenders. But they, they're with the snow pants. No. I got snow pants with suspenders. What are you wearing snow pants for? Go, uh, you know, uh, snowshoeing. Snow what? Snowshoeing. Snowshoeing. Something yeah. you've done once before you get carried away. <laughs> He's done it one well, time. You wear the tennis the rackets, tennis rackets on, your on your feet. Well, they're not tennis rackets, but yeah. You're similar. getting like an inch up there. What are you talking he about? Bought his in whole... New Hampshire? Oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 he no. bought his whole family <laughs> snowshoes. Yep. Um, oh, I thought you were going to show something. <laughs> Oh, it's just fat guys in suspenders. Oh. <laughs> it's holy. <laughs> Dude, I like that. was that. rude, Christine. <laughs> Listen, when, if I'm doing a suit... Uh, I I'm, didn't I, mean with suits. It'll look great. It does look no, great No, no, I, I like a if suspender you, If you're with built suit. like you, yeah. Now, suspenders on a suit, so. I don't no, mind. I think it goes with anyone with it. Yeah, any suspenders look nice on a suit because it, it, it makes it... Uh, even for a big guy, it's billowy in parts then because it's being strapped down, so it looks a little. Yeah, but it pulls different parts the, where, the, yeah, where they there's connect. Tension it, then. Pull, it pulls up the pant. And as a fact, you know, tension on a shirt and it rides right up your ass. You're right, but you also got to be sure then, uh, for sure, that you you have it have to go straight down nip line, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or it looks like your tits are bursting out of a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody pours a pitcher of water on you. <laughs> oh, who's that? I should be holding St. Pauli's, uh, St. Pauli girl fucking beers in my hand. <laughs> At the end of my fatness, though, I was my rule was no tie, no tuck. Fuck it. Anywhere sure. I went, I saw, no I tie, saw that no on tuck. You, yeah. No tie, no You had a no pretty tuck. good shirt for it, too. Really? I, I, I saw a lot of pictures. There's a shirt, and fat guy shirts, they have an extra button down the bottom. Mm-hmm. You understand? There's the fat guy button down the sure. bottom. A lot of people don't know about that's to so when you pick your thing up, it doesn't don't flap. Go peeking. Up. You don't yeah. go peeking at your little belly. Mm -hmm. So no, no tuck, no tie was my thing for a while. Yeah, I'm really. no tie. I feel like I've reached. I'm never doing a tie again. I actually there's have no a, reason. I do a bow tie now. I respect that. That's fun. Yeah, I'm it's, just not doing a tie. It's made of peacock. I feathers. want you to know, Bobby, what I just witnessed there. <laughs> that was Kevin Ryan giving you elder respect, elder comedian respect. You said I do a bow tie. He's like, yeah, that's totally cool. I know, I'm with it. I own a bow tie. I have a bow tie. Bow yeah. ties are hot. Dude. I love a bow tie. But Kevin didn't think it was as cool as he I wear. I wear with my <laughs> I wear with my snowshoes. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the family. <laughs> Where are you wearing a bow tie? I wore a bow tie to the last wedding I went to. Jeez. I wore it's it's made of peacock feathers. Wait, the wedding that was on the wrong night. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Patels were very happy. I showed. Bobby up. drove out to a very far away wedding on the wrong night. Oh, oh shit! That was my fucking dumb wife who's premenopause. <laughs> we we showed up at that this seems wedding. Personal. <laughs> <laughs> She's hot really flashing the bus. <laughs> You're the one wearing a bow tie. Bobby, I don't know. I guess it's today. I guess the I guess the thing's today. I'm hot Two flashing. hours out in New Jersey where F Dave Smith lives in the woods. <laughs> okay, we're out there. Going, it's on a farm, going to like field to field, looking for this farm. Showing up at a farm the wrong day in a bow tie is pretty fucking hilarious. <laughs> Just a guy with a sheep. Yeah. You're on the wrong day, Bob. Yeah. You look like you're from the bank <laughs> foreclosing. <laughs> I'm here to trade slaves with y'all. <laughs> I, I got, got my haul in this farm. I got a seat. <laughs> I got my haul in the back. I heard you had a young buck. I got to get my eyes on. <laughs> Bob, 
Bobby selling his wares <laughs> from town to town. He pops open a briefcase. Yeah. <laughs> Step right up, folks. I got the elixir that's going to change your life. <laughs> Going to a farm in a blood. bow tie the wrong I, day. I used to wear 350. Now look at me. <laughs> look I'll at do fancy... this magic bow tie. Made of pure peacock feathers. Found this fancy lady back in the city. I brought her out here to show you. Sure, she's premenopausal, <laughs> but sure, that's she's her blotchy and her neck is hot all the time. <laughs> she doesn't share the voluptuous nature of your natural born thick ladies out here. Sure, she's lazy enough not to do her roots anymore. <laughs> did you... oh, oh, deep gut. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you get a hotel and stay out or did you drive back? No, we, we had to drive all the way back, get a new babysit. It was a fucking That's nightmare. That's crazy. Whose Dri- wedding was it, if it you don't was, mind me asking? It uh, was Louie's assistant, um, okay. Leah. She had a big, huge, uh, it was a circus theme wedding, too. It was funny. Cause we were, she told me this whole thing, and there's going to be circus people and all kinds of jugglers and people on stilts. And we show up. I'm looking for all this shit. There's nothing. He goes, I just see a farm and a lazy guy with hay in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you came on the wrong day, bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> was, the Louie wedding ain't till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you stay in the barn if you want. But your wife's going to have to stay in the big house with me. As they say in Yellowstone, right? He goes, well, we could always use another hand down here. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I've not, I don't know if I was ever that mad at her than when we're in the, when the guy went and goes, yeah, there's a wedding here tomorrow. And I just saw her go, oh, is it? I was like, you oh, is it? fucking That's new. crazy as a, as a, I, I would never get in a car to drive that far without getting eyes on Triple an invitation. Triple confirmation. Yeah. Without being like. Let let me. I believe you that it's here, but I gotta get eyes on this. But that I feel, would, even if it was like talked about for a couple of weeks within the house, and it, it was, I assume the mistake was committed to. Months way of, back. Yeah, 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 of course. Don't forget next Friday we got yeah. whatever. Yeah, that would have been send a nice envelope and it's, miss the wedding. I want to go back. You guys probably aren't relying on your ladies as much as me and Bobby are. Oh, because I no, would, me and I need that wrong. same shit. I need that same shit. If Christine made that mistake, I would just be like, yeah, she said it was today, so it's today. Yeah, and we would just go. Yeah, and then I like to live in that because then I'm right. When I'm shitty to her the whole drive back. Oh. Sure. Oh, yeah, it's great. Hey, yeah, no, I'm yeah. with that. Nothing better than being right <laughs> hey, than arguing. Yeah. Yeah, I like what you're better. putting down, big guy. It's nothing better than just owning the night. You own the rest of the night. I didn't. I went. I took her to a steak dinner at, at Eddie V's. You rewarded her. And then I got her a Louis Vuitton bag. Well, this is not how someone learns, Bobby. <laughs> he traded in his bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> ah, peacock feather, this ought to do. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys bought her here? <laughs> I was in a all with a fucking peacock bow tie. Oh my god. Yeah. Mr. Fucking Tiddlywinks goes to the mall. They probably thought you were there to buy them all. <laughs> Have it, you seen them all uh, recently? Is it Jesus feathers? Christ. It's it's made of feathers? It's uh, made of peacock feathers. Bow tie made of uh, peacock feathers. Does it come out like a handlebar <laughs> bar mustache? Yeah, I can, you can fly with it. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently it's going under, but the fucking Nyack mall. I, I love that the, mall. I, it, I mean, I love it that it's... No, I love it that it's bad. It's, it's like you bad. go... Dude, you can take... I take my dog in that mall. No one says anything. <laughs> you can it. just walk wow. around. No one cares. You, you can, it's... <laughs> it's crazy. There's no help. No. It's... Dude, what's crazy about mall American malls now... Because you go on the road, you'll pop into sure. a mall, you know, whatever. Kill some time is... There's still people in the kiosk. You're like, the whole first floor is empty, buddy. Get a store. Believe in yourself. You're still out in the middle of the mall. Come on. Dirt cheap. Dirt, get, get next to the, the BB gun guy. They're yeah. killing it. Hey, shave club for men. <laughs> Let's BB get a freaking mortar, huh? They, have a, they do have a BB gun. They do gun. have like BB you gun can, and paintballs. You can, you can shoot BB guns. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, you still got the guy like peddling cell phone and cases. The problem is it's the, it's the what you can afford. What are people paying for? Bobby individually by himself we may have told you guys the story by himself got a food truck a brick and mortar restaurant from his patronage in one summer yeah in one in two weeks of a summer Bobby bought so many meatloaf sandwiches from a meatloaf sandwich place I'm not, that they opened up, and I swear to you, a brick and mortar meatloaf they're sandwich. They're not franchised. Store. <laughs> it's not even a joke. 150 locations across the country. <laughs> the first week it just left. That's a lot went, of meatloaf. I went there so much. I went. Well, back. let me let me explain it from my perspective because that was the where funniest. was this? I'm Bobby, sorry, Montreal. Montreal is this a meatloaf it's, panini we're talking about? No. He's talking about Arby's. <laughs> no, no. This is so this bad. is meatloaf. Which was had all kinds of like just whatever ketchupy sauce it was made in. Yeah, it was delicious. Had a homemade chutney. Ooh. Yeah, which is then they put a chutney, and it's made. It's basically in between a grilled cheese. Yeah, ah. it was fr- It was 
so decadent. <laughs> remember, me and Bobby went the one that we got like kind of were over there. It's like, yeah, let's, I guess try one of these. <laughs> and we tried it, and we were like, God damn it. We were like, it's pro. We both knew it's two fat guys sitting there. It's problematically good. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I go. Well, you know what, dude? We'll have an excuse. Like, let's stay away from this fucking thing. <laughs> and then when Christine gets to town, and, and Dawn, I think, also yeah. maybe, was coming to town uh, the next week, we'll take the girls and we'll go over there. So I meet up with Dave Smith came into town, and I remember taking Dave Smith and Christine <laughs> over to the truck. And when I get to the truck the second week, it says... On a grease board. I'll take two Bobbies. But <laughs> <laughs> Hold the dawn. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, it said customer of the month. It's only, it's been, only been a week. week. <laughs> it's been a week. And they're only there for two weeks. And it's been three days. <laughs> but I go, customer of the month, Robert Kelly. I was like, what the fuck? Me and Christine saw I'm like, what the hell? And they they were, if you bring up Bobby right there, they're going to slide you a little free thing. You know Bobby? Please, one of these is on the take house. Take a chutney. Bobby <laughs> had a surplus of chutney mason jars in his room they just kept giving him because he spent so much money there they so what Bobby did over the course of the week apparently is told everybody else a one time thing like it's a lot but I'll go get it with you once <laughs> I like that move I went back there oh probably, this place looks good I, went, I think eight times I got eight sandwiches I just kept going back I actually went by myself at one point uh -huh. I, I was like I'll be right back I'm getting a coffee I went and got an old meatloaf sandwich and ate it by myself on getting a, a coffee on a, what, a, what, a, what a turn of events I went from a Five calorie drink <laughs> to a meatloaf sandwich. Don't My forget, fifth of the week. Don't forget the chutney. And the chutney. <laughs> Bucket of chutney. You definitely had more than one in a day at least once. Well, I had two a day. I, <laughs> I actually had to leave. You don't leave. become cousin of the month or one a day. These are rookie numbers. Yeah. I, I anyone could go one anybody, a day. Anybody do one a day. I left the stuff. You know the stuff they give you at the festival, all that shit they give you? I had to leave some of it for my chutneys that I had to pack in my bag. Oh, no. You had to leave behind your uh, fucking Gary Owens CD that you didn't ask for that was in your bag? Throwing your CPAP away at the airport because <laughs> they're way in the bag? <laughs> Throw it out! You know what's weird? We rode our bikes all the way to the brick and mortar. Oh, yeah. And they don't don't serve the meatloaf sandwiches there. Oh my God. Those are only in the trucks. They, they like made them for a special. Yeah. I paid for this shit. But I'm telling you, yeah, so it, was like, it was like more of a chicken place, mm. like a broiled, not delicious chicken. But we told them when we got to the brick and mortar, like, no, we're here because of the thing. And I'm almost certain when we said Robert Kelly, they go, Get a couple pieces of the meatloaf. We can fry it for you in the back. And they made us the sandwich. They had to break glass to get into it. The emergency Bobby meatloaf. He's not coming to town today, is he? All right. You can, you can have his. Just a petrified sandwich in a glass case. That's where it all started right there. They make one every day for him in case he shows up. You're like Ricky Bobby's dad. Leaving tickets. Oh, we sit at place at the table for Robert Kelly. I like a nice meatloaf, though, Bobby. Buddy, I'll tell you that. Tell you this, that sandwich, this sandwich Ooh, was. The best sandwich I've ever I eaten. feel bad because I don't know the name of the place. I couldn't tell you the recipe. It was some un French name. Bobby's. Un unduplicatable, but fuck, it was good. I'm with it. Was it. Good. it was it good. It was so good. They had it there. They had, one year they had it. Two years they had it there. The next year I went back. <laughs> when I showed up, they went, hey. They, <laughs> they, knew, they knew me from the year before. <laughs> Extra staff on. <laughs> <laughs> it's something when people have that for me they can't figure out. I'll tell you, if I could figure out at home a quick way to whip up McDonald's hot mustard sauce... I could probably never I'm have sure McDonald's again. I'm sure you can again. figure that out. In we can figure that out now. No, you're not, it's probably. They three show things. you the ingredients already on the package. You still can't do it. <laughs> you don't know how to do it though. <laughs> they they show, you don't have any niacin. <laughs> listen, <laughs> niacin. <laughs> listen, we can all throw together ketchup, mayonnaise, and relish. Sure. But is it Big Mac sauce when you make it at home? You're not, you ain't wrong, baby. Yeah, you know it's something about it. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why. Um, Starbucks one time when I used to go to the same one all the time in Long Island. Uh, one time they were like, like the staff there like slid me. They were like, here, like here's the chai, whatever. And I went and I just gave me the like the you know the chai stuff. I went home and made it with oat milk the same way I would get it at the store with my ice cubes from home. Uh, Undrinkable. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just, but, it's just something weird about it. It wasn't right. It wasn't yeah. right at all. I guess Soda Stream is never gonna taste like a fountain soda. Dude, I, dude, I'll mm -hmm. listen. I, I've been a fat ass my whole life. I didn't buy that for a half a second. <laughs> yes. I, I, bootleg I, Coke, get I, out of here. I, I, Fucking, I, I can, if I can buy RC Cola in times, I, of I had <laughs> one. Tab. I can imagine you have. I, I one. had one in my fridge. Uh, that's nice, just because Christine's. Yeah. 
a girl and girls like soda. I don't know. It's like your only excitement in their lives. But like uh, girls like seltzer. <laughs> yeah, I had a soda screen built into the fridge. <laughs> sounds like a sixth grader, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like girls like seltzer. <laughs> they do. I don't get seltzer. Really? I, no. Oh, I love a nice seltzer. I love. I, I don't I like drink it anymore. Better. I don't yeah. drink it anymore. <laughs> I know. I just turned on. I just started drinking it. Root beer is the. Be- I mean, the root beer is the best. The sweetest. It's the best soda yeah, out it's there. I take of a, the gods. I mean, if they have a root beer, I'm getting it. Uh huh. I'm not even supposed to drink it. I'll, I'll fucking drink a root beer. You a root beer guy? Yeah. Philly's got some good root beers. Hank's. Great nah, root here beer. we go. Pennsylvania, du- Pennsylvania, or, Pennsylvania Dutch. Dutch uh, Pennsylvania Birch beer? Dutch. Birch. Dude, yeah. Birch. Uh, My Birch buddy's beer. grandfather is Hank. We found that out. Really? Oh, man. That's big news, We found dude. it out at a birthday party. There was... Crates of it, and we're like, "What the fuck?" Dude, those are because fun. my great grandfather's Hank. We're like, Jesus That's, Christ! What's he got root beer money? What is Hank's, Hank's, root, Hank's, root, beer. Hank's root beer? It's so, like a Boylan's. Listen, I like a good uh, thing. <laughs> there was a, a a sneaker store by our house growing up, it was called Sneaky Pete's. That's where we always That's get our thing. That's pretty good. And it was the picture was uh, like a little boy with a bowl haircut peeking out of a shoe, like a drawing. And then I went to summer camp one year, and they were like. That's a uh, sneaky Pete. That's Pete. Like for, no, that's like the kid uh-huh. who his dad owns the company. Like the sneaky Gerber P- baby. Right. It's sneaky Pete. Sneaky Pete. Except with a meth problem. Mega, mega mentally retarded. <laughs> <laughs> they left that out of the picture. I'm sure. Sneaky, he was like a like I, I don't want to say it was Down syndrome. It was something else. But it was like, you know it's like tongue hanging out of the mouth side, <laughs> and that's why they always show his eyes peeking out of the shoe. Like, hey, that's I'm hiding up. a shoe. <laughs> Get out of the shoe, Pete. <laughs> Pete, get your ass out of my shoes. <laughs> Every he day. Eat, he used to eat the shoes. <laughs> oh, dude, Sneaky Pete was just a bowl haircutted like uh, mentally challenged kid. Dude. So you're like, oh, yeah. Sneaky Pete. Probably I never, never saw him. a dime of that money either. <laughs> <laughs> Did a conservatorship till he's ninety. <laughs> oh, dude, the local kid. Yeah, Sneaky Pete. Mm-hmm. Yeah, somebody told me they were uh, they they were related to Jerry's got a diamond in his beard. Ooh, uh, Rock and uh, Robbins. Robin's, Robin's Eighth and Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? That was a, f- a famous Philly commercial, uh, would, and it was jewelry two store. Guys, it was jewelry. So, so Steven Singer um, says his old ads, at least, and some of the ones we had on Bonfire through the years, say uh, on the other side of Eighth and Walnut. Yeah, they, okay. Because. Uh, That's where the other place called Barry Robbins. Robbins, Robbins it, yeah, rocks. Yeah, it's like Robbins, Ro- Robin, Rock and Robin, Rock, Rock. Yeah. You can find the commercial, Christine. Um, and, and he then had a one diamond. Point, yeah, one full point, beard had a diamond in his beard. If you got the long version of the commercial, they go, "Jerry's got a diamond in his beard," and then Jerry points it and goes, "Lots of people think that's really weird." Rock and Robbins, <laughs> Rock, <laughs> Rock, Rock. Robin's Eighth and Walnut. So uh, yeah, so Steven Singer says he's on the other corner of Eighth and Walnut, which I assume is just the jewelry area of Philly. Yeah, it's like the jewel diamond district. That guy had to get hell ass in Philly back then. Rob- that, oh, Jerry, the diamond in your ear. Oh, or how about the beard? Geeter? How about the Geeter? Jerry Blavitt spinning Damn. the fucking oldies the hits. Geeter with the heater. The geeter with the heater. <laughs> yeah. Greatest nickname of all time. <laughs> That's Bobby. Boston's got to be filled with. F- take out the Steve Sweeney's of just. Local heroes that was just raining ass in them from like you know the, the guy who ran like a mattress store yeah or, sounds like those we were dealership you always that's know. one of the questions we've been doing recently of who was the first uh, famous person you met that necessarily wasn't famous but in your world you're like that's that's fucking Rock and Robbins that's it like who the guy that owns the bar the, the guy if, that owns the whatever you were a kid, who, people, was, who was the hot DJ when you people, were a kid? it was Mark Parento. Okay, and he got arrested for pedophilia. <laughs> nice, try, they try, all do. Try, he picked up a kid in D.C. with a Sony PlayStation in his car. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> poor little black kid. He got fucking sent to prison. Jesus. Yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Eh? What do you yeah, do? Right? Yeah, what are you gonna do? You, at least he got something. I never got to meet uh, Uncle Eddie. I would have loved that. Uh, a lot of crazy spices. Eddie. My my cousins. Oh, we talked about him. I think last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was like an ATM him. machine for dirt bags in Philly. Yeah, you can sell him your underwear, your dirty underwear, or take a piss or a shit. Give Hundred bucks. Yeah, they, yeah. In Boston, they have Jordan's Furniture, which is like a, it's a furniture it's a store. franchise now. I it's think. a franchise now, but back in the day, it was like you would go to Jordan's Furniture as a night out. Mm-hmm. But was the guy, was the owner of that, yeah, like they, in the yeah. city, like that's the owner of Jordan's like, that's house? That's like Big Marty's yeah. carpet. Remember yeah. Big Marty? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the guy had a Shout po- out to Big Marty. He had a ponytail. I remember that. He, you Ooh. knew it was him because he had a ponytail with an elastic in it. It was always wet. Oh, his ponytail hate was that wet. guy. <laughs> a showroom back in the 80s could really get a dirtbag family out of the house. Oh, <laughs> really? God, we could try that, it all. So many car dealerships that we went to on a Saturday with no intentions of buying. <laughs> yeah. Just something Just to the cars. do. <laughs> yeah, see the cars, get the free hot dogs. 
dog, <laughs> anything. I I spin the so wheel, you, whatever yeah, they got there. The like wheel. Meet, if you get there early enough, you get to meet Mike Schmidt for an hour or something. Yeah, do Mike Schmidt had could. a hoagie place in my hometown. <laughs> really? And we would go in, and he'd be there like it'd be it was empty all the time. But <laughs> he was in, Mike Schmidt. <laughs> he just be his, in. He's like, ah, man, this business is eating me alive. <laughs> Mike I remember one time he was he was going over paperwork, not happy. <laughs> and I was sitting with a huge plate of cheese fries and just being like, that guy is upset right now. You go, hey, Schmitty, uh, give me five burgers to go. More hoagies These to portions go are huge. You, you've got to be losing your head. Your margins are off the charts. I still like a nice furniture store. If I sure. see it I'll go in and sit on the couch and how much is this? Is when me it? and Christine were looking for furniture at one point, I did enjoy. I do not mind walking around and taking a couple of loads off. Mm, sure. <laughs> really... I hate it. Because they're like hawks and I can't lie. You know what I mean? They're like, what are you in the mood for? What do you have? What are you? Like, I got no money. Now they show you like an <laughs> iPad and you're like, what the fuck? Let me just. I, know. I, do I hate when they bring out the it. other things. I'm like, I just want to sit and see maybe this is the kind of thing one day. <laughs> but I'm yeah. just trying to kill the hours of the day, man. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's I just want to sit and by. smell plastic for a little while. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> get my... that scent. I remember a family friend got the new uh, new oven that was uh, like the ceramic that wasn't the coils or the flames. It was like the ceramic tie because mm -hmm. he worked for Whirlpool. Man, they got that installed. <laughs> Fifty of us went over. Sure, <laughs> all stood in the kitchen taking turns, going. It immediately gets cold again. Like, yeah. We were fucking baffled. If somebody redid their kitchen, it was like everybody was. I was selling tickets. Everybody was over there. I wanted to, when you guys do the podcast. What's the most? You mean Ari Garbage? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you <laughs> what did I say? Why, Did I not say Ari Garbage? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, I was just off. plugging it. <laughs> what do you guys think? You mean available on the You said that too. You're like, Ari right, Garbage? Uh, you guys, what's, do you find like the. Like, what's the smallest thing that you found as like a common thread behind, behind a lot of garbage people? Like, I bet like a lot of people have stories of like. Hmm. I think if you're like, if you have your. If your car lighter. Has ever shot out? <laughs> yeah. Sure, you had the whole bit. Yeah, yeah. Sure, <laughs> that was a bit, dude. When that thing would pop, oh man, dude. your dad would freak out. More people than you would realize have either stuck their finger in there when the lighter wasn't in there, and it shocks the shit out of you, or they've been burned by the lighter. I remember I put it on my tongue for some reason and burned myself. <laughs> Wait, I was hungry? that dumb. <laughs> Bad tongue. You give me so much trouble. <laughs> God damn it, taste buds. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was the third day you had to blow your teacher, and he told you both get in trouble if anyone found out. Yeah. <laughs> you deserve it, you dirty little bitch. I'd be dazzled my tongue. <laughs> like with these rhinestones, one, the, one of the big you things. arrows that... pointing to your mouth and bejazzle. Is the shitty vacation is a telltale sign yeah. of, even if your parents at some point started doing well, and like they were the ones that got some money. There was the early days. The driving, where it was the, the driving, driving to, to vacation. Uh, you know, some real shit beach town or some shit fucking. And the lengths that people park. would go. I hate to steal a chapter three of the Chronicles, but in the we, we definitely got to vacation at Baltimore. Baltimore, yeah, yeah just like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. at the Hyatt or whatever. The like. <laughs> yeah, the, but the a vacation, non destination. The vacation was the. That the hotel had room service, <laughs> and my parents were like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It goes burgers, right to your room. Uh, can from eat, the hotel. watch TV here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they were like, and they have movies that are in the movie. They just came out of the movie theaters Still, yeah. on the TV that you can rent. And it was like they were so blown away. So didn't they the put future. you up there and then go out and ha have a t night on the town where you were up there watching movies and shit? I thought they left you in the room. Just to go walk around the mall. It was attached to it was a walking bridge to a mall. <laughs> And I couldn't believe that. When we, got the other, that walk, we got together that walking bridge. We got together that walking bridge. from West Philly. And then you're like, a Might walking bridge. Might as well have been in Star Trek, dude. That's oh, crazy. If it has, if it has goes, the glass cover on it. It did. It's like, where's the flying cars? <laughs> <laughs> Is this Tomorrowland? Do you remember was, all, the, all the, the rides, though, as a kid? Seemed like it was 17 hours. But it, oh, now, you, now you do it now. It's like, oh, well, it's 45 minutes away. 90 minutes, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. 90, 90 minutes now. as an eight-year-old. Yeah. Road Forget trip. Forget about it, oh, dude. Just staring I was the stopping 15 times. There was no iPads. Oh. You just had to sit in the back and look at flowers on the fucking highway. <laughs> I was... Cooler, I think, I think uh, full-time cooler in a car. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fucking, that's probably sure. a, a thing. I didn't have that my, in my own family, but like uh, my Uncle Tommy was a cooler. And by the way. It was for beers. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it was reaching back. It wasn't like, well, this is the core. Snacks. We have beers for when we go somewhere. But, you know, I have my sodas and waters and stuff. It goes, 
extre- exclusively yeah. MGD. Yeah, dude, I got the don't Trying drink and drive song in there. <laughs> I got my don't drink and drive talk while having a Rolling Rock in a cab of a pickup truck. He's like, yeah, you shouldn't drink and drive. I'm like, kind of like I was like six. I'm like, like we're doing now. He's like, I'm not drunk. I'm like, all right. <laughs> and these are cold. It's different psychologically. He's like, we worked all day. We were doing construction. I'm like, all right. That's also 99 percent of construction dri- people that are, they're having a beer on a Friday at 2 p.m. Oh, That's yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I remember I mean, the first car we got that had AC. We were flipping out that they rolled the windows up on the way to the. We were going to Hampton Beach, which was only like forty-five minutes away, and they got a Riviera, mm-hmm. and they rolled the windows up. And we were like, but, "What the fuck yeah, are you doing?" The AC. And he hit a button, and it was like, "Oh my god, we're in the refrigerator." <laughs> Bobby almost rolled out of the car. <laughs> trying to kill us. <laughs> I'm boxed in. I'm boxed in. <laughs> Dude, I was telling them we were driving down the shore, driving down to North Wildwood. I was probably 10. Weird Al had just dropped Amish Paradise. Nice. And I thought it was the funniest, coolest <laughs> thing in the world. And my sister was 16 or 17 at the time, and she had a car full of friends. And I was like, let me wait till they. G-. I was. I thought I was showing them Amish Paradise. Man, I thought I was the coolest fat ten year old. I put it on, and they were all like, "Can we turn this off?" <laughs> First of all, thinking about thinking, 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 thinking I was going to close with seventeen year olds. Par- parody comedy, bro. <laughs> Gangsta's Paradise wouldn't have got those girls impressed. <laughs> you are a loser, volume one. No girls ever go. He goes, oh my god, we have some guy. First of all, he's cute as hell. He's super Niyankovic. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his own place. He's got dirty underwear on. <laughs> he stopped twice for Burger King. <laughs> He's wearing pajamas. He's wearing underwear with characters on them and a t-shirt. <laughs> and his mom ties his belt. <laughs> uh, the thing with the when the AC hit and you were in the car, that was great. But about two seconds later, once it got cold in there, then the heaters would start up, and you were smoked out in that thing. Oh, no windows oh, yeah. open? They used, to smoke. Oh. they used to smoke in the car. Man. Oh, when yeah. you used to smoke, yeah. I can smell that air, that freezing yep. cold air with a My little bit smoked. of heater and perfume. They smoked in the car, but just, you'd roll the window down for the cigarette. Oh, never. Yeah, I always cracked the they window, whether eat, it was uh, raining or whatever, windows same going with, down. Same with me. I'd rather just, I just know, next time I get my car clean, hey, make sure you wipe down the uh, ledge there because it's got a lot of fucking dirty rain. <laughs> sure. And sh- I'll tell you what's one of the most infuriating things, though, is lighting a cigarette when it's raining. It's the worst. You're doing this. No, no, I'm saying you're in the car, you light it, and then somewhere in your first one, just God gives you that hilarious one Big thick drop. raindrop Big just drop blasts shit. right <laughs> on the cherry, and you're like, damn, man. <laughs> because I have learned, this is a pretty trash but funny thing. If your cigarette gets wet in the middle, just keep smoking it. It'll dry out. The heat, t- the heat pulled through. It'll turn brown <laughs> it turn, on you. Yeah, it, <laughs> but, so it's it'll dry spe- out. Yeah. It's all speckled. And you're like, like you're, bad drywall. You really feel like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you really feel like, this is probably worse for me now. I don't know why sure. it's like showing you. It's like, never look at the back of the filter. You know, you're that's like, like, oh, yeah. That's one of the one of the tips that we got. We were talking about wet cigs at, on one episode, and someone's like, yeah, you put them through the wash, whatever. Fucking put them in the microwave, dries them out. They'll, they will turn brown, but they're back smoking. But they, <laughs> taste, they taste so bad if you if you smoke a, a cigarette that was wet and then dried. Oh yeah, I've been hemmed up. But when you're in a bind, you're gonna do that. I've just smoked stale cigarettes too. They were like sitting around. I found uh, I a pack from like anymore, a long yeah. time ago, and I'm out, and I'm like, oh, there is that pack that we found in my pocket a year ago, and mm-hmm. then it's nasty. Oof. It's nasty. I'm alright with it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, it's it's like. It is what it is. You still no, smoke too? Yeah. These are my last two got, friends in the yeah. world. Aren't you guys running a marathon in there? Yeah, I smoked. I, I, I smoked two halves today. All right, get off my back, Bobby. It's a five K, Bobby. It'll <laughs> take ten minutes. Uh, I, the, you should smoke while you walk. I, I mean, <laughs> if I knew that you were I'm doing this to, with I'm, Jelly Roll, I would sit and smoke cigarettes and weed and walk five miles. <laughs> like I added weed into that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I gotta enjoy myself. <laughs> Uh, also, I will. Uh, we can have beers on the walk. White uh, claws. Yeah. Let's do white claws. Less calories. Yeah, more athletic. Up too much. <laughs> more athletic. <laughs> but we'll have them in sports things. Vodka, <laughs> liquid <laughs> IV. <laughs> um, I, I miss smoking though. 
I yeah. do like a cigar. I romanticize it. You were down smoking a cigar two minutes ago. Cigar is different. It is different. It's a yeah, little it doesn't different. Hit. It doesn't hit like doesn't a cigarette. Hit do you just... take it? Do you do you inhale it? No, them? you Never. can't. No, you I'll fucking die. You can't <laughs> inhale a cigar. You're a moron. <laughs> but a cigarette, I miss having. I miss having that pack. Sure. You know, waking up, going to the deli, getting your shitty cup you of coffee. Up, you roll it up in the sleeve of your white t-shirt. <laughs> I remember before smoking, you fought the you and the, other, <laughs> yeah, you and the other greasers were going out. <laughs> I remember smoking on a plane. That's crazy. That I don't even remember. I, all I remember is the ashtrays. I don't remember nine. ever. <laughs> I was 15. I fucking lit up on a plane. I asked the students for matches. Jesus. She's like, oh, go, you told us. Did you light yeah. it on her ass? <laughs> Thanks, doll Thanks, face. princess. <laughs> <laughs> princess. Tell the captain if he needs any help up there. I'm back here. Huh? <laughs> hey, if you catch a little free time later in this flight, just uh, I got a blanket we can go under. I smoked on an Amtrak once in New York City. As soon as it got past a certain point going up to Buffalo, it just, the, the, the cart the food cart just turned smoking mm -hmm. and then everybody just piled up there and you could just smoke on the train Damn. that was the shit that would be it's, great it's bad now. i mean like when you go out for sigs it's just you at this point probably yeah. maybe one or two yeah it's like it's that's the that's the real shitty part is you're at a club you're like oh I'll pop out for a sig and then you're like oh it's just fucking me by myself right now i said david tell has gauged 100 percent of his opening like acts that he brings on in the road by heaters. who will smoke cigarettes yeah. with him. That's I fully, fully believe that. Because like Becky Owen went with him for a while, and uh, Mike Fenoya went with him for a while and stuff. And like it didn't last as long. Like then Ian kind of came because Ian's gonna stay up till four in the morning and smoke cigarettes, yeah. and drinking that. coffee, smoking. Yeah. Yeah. He might suck your dick too. <laughs> and then he also will suck your dick. Just saying. He'll probably, yeah. He's also will put on a wig if and... you're in a jam. <laughs> I'm happy you Talk guys. Talk about are... a wet cigarette. <laughs> I'm happy you guys are still here. I thought all the. Fucking all my Philly buds were gonna fucking go to Austin. How have you not gotten the draw yet? Oh, You've we... been asked to go, right? I assume a thousand times. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did they, yeah, did yeah, they yeah. buy you a house? Um, <laughs> we what? have, we, I mean, the studio is huge. We built, I mean, we signed that lease, and everybody's like, go to Austin. You're like, I just fucking, I'm locked in here, man. You think you would have, could have been convinced to go? I don't think so. My wife doesn't want to go. Yeah. So it's like, you know, she moved here from Germany. I can't be like, hey, you just planted your fucking flag. Now let's move to another city for me. How about you? Would you have done it? I couldn't move that far away from uh, my family. Yeah. From my mom and shit. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I had would, the same thing. I would if Rogan bought me a house, I'd move tomorrow. Sure, it looks awesome. It's yeah, funny, it's just funny some, shit, man. Get like, some serious, serious studios out there. If Rogan bought you a house, if Rogan bought me and you a house, no, no, no. Give me a gig and then pay me whatever you're going to give me for that gig, and I'll say at least I did the gig for it. I can't have a man buy me a house. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the one you want, Cupcake? <laughs> Go and dance around in it a little bit. <laughs> See how you like the acoustics. I do like the. I do like the. The hangs look like they're a great time. Yeah. It's all my fucking boys are down sure. there. It looks awesome. But like, I'm also a little older now. So like the smoking and the drink, like I, I'm happy that now my friends up here don't smoke and drink as much, because mm -hmm. I would just be out with them. I would just be out every night. Yeah. I'm like, I find myself after even if I'm at like ten fifteen, I'm done spots, and I'm like, no, oh, like to start texting like my booze bag friends, yeah. like where are you at? What time you done? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh man, I'm just I'm chasing this fucking dragon. <laughs> I'm if I was down there, it'd be over. I'm struggling to watch like a show on Netflix past eleven. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll I, take a melatonin and get a nice night's sleep. Is yes, happy with me. I'm happy to be home by fucking midnight and yeah. not out fucking smoking and drinking like an idiot. But yeah, the, I, the spots in the city have gotten lonelier over the we've oh, noticed over the last. Like, I think it's two like years. also we're older too, but like no, you know, it's it's they don't hang. We, just dude, not the I same. remember hanging it's out until the way, birds were chirping. It's way yeah. I remember sucks. way lonelier. I used, we used to, to hang out till like in the morning. Like I remember one night I saw Godfrey hit a homeless person with his car. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was banging a chick across the street in the cellar, and we were out smoking on her stoop and then it was like six in the morning and Godfrey was in his Honda Civic and I went yo Godfrey and he went yo and he just backed up and hit a homeless guy and he went my bag I don't know if uh, there's even I mean like weekly at the cell when I was the thick of it which I will say was kind of like the the end of like the table being the same people all the time yeah. and, and like the slow the sort of transition um, but when I was there, like six, seven nights a week for those years, I mean, like stuff happened there. All you know, I mean, because there was so much going on, just like big gaggles outside of comics mm -hmm. doing like a thing, whether yeah. it be like harassing women and split it into two sides and make everybody walk through, through? everyone yeah, like yeah, yeah. bust balls of people on the street, and just like 
stuff. There was like, and then the, yeah, let's go play basketball at two in the morning. Yeah, we used to play in the, the projects. Yeah, remember we spent the projects at like two I in did, the morning. Twenty third Street. Until the kids from the projects came in one night, <laughs> they were like, "Hey, you want to play?" And we we're like, "We're just gonna no, we're gonna go." <laughs> Thanks for not killing us. Remember, remember the time we got <laughs> Norton used to come? We got him pom poms, a, <laughs> a little cone because he never would play. We just sit on the bench and watch us. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but we yeah. used to walk by that all the time when we were when we were climbing up in the village at the at the bar shows. Everybody would be at the yeah. back table hanging out. You'd pop in, try to get in. You'd see you guys hanging out and stuff wow. like that. Looked like but then out front, front it was just comics, and you knew a, a bunch, like a zillion people in that couple blocks or even yeah, like no. around the city, and it's just like... When I go, I'm just like that. It's like I don't have any interest. I'm like, let me do my spot and get out of here. It's just like, me smoking uh, under an uh, overhang, looking for eye contact with someone to staff. I know. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, it would be. It would be. A, you'd all wind up back there. Yeah. yeah. At one point, so it like you know, f- it'd be this group and then that group and then Patrice would come in and it would be this all night thing and then we'd all wind up back at the cellar and we'd hang out there until the last show. So in fact, I'll bet... Away? Is well, that why it's... No, nah, well, we, all, we, we all weren't headliners at the point. We're all yeah, I think like, everybody's working more. We, we weren't headliners, so then all of a sudden, like, we had to all go away for the weekend, mm. and then the weekend, we weren't there, and now they had to replace us, and now, dude, I think the Christmas party, I was sitting there with Keith and Voss, and a dude walked in with a white leather jacket with 15 raccoon tails hanging off it, and nobody said anything. <laughs> I was like, well, I stand I, by my choice too. <laughs> <laughs> goes, it's Gautier. <laughs> it's Gautier. I showed up with. I, I was genuine up. gopher. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wore like fucking security guard sweatpants one night, and I burned them the next day. Sure. You know, this guy was just walking around, white leather jacket with raccoon tails hanging off the back, mm-hmm. and people were like, hey, I love your jacket. I was like, me and Keith were like, this goddamn motherfucker, I can't say it, but <laughs> fucking crazy. Nobody nobody fucks with anybody. Nobody says anything to anybody. They actually have nice conversations No, now. but I also think, I think probably more than ever, and there's so many shows and so many comics there, that it's, there's just, not, what it is, there's not lots of groups of friends working there. Yeah. Like yeah. You're, you're likely well, to go down there and not really know or be more sensitive with, But again, I, I don't know. They're who more, they are, so maybe they are all like groups of people. But well I'm, just, I'm just out of the loop. They're they're, they're nicer to each other now, because they weren't because they weren't. Well, I said before because comedy, particularly too, is now an achievable it's thought job. process to get into. Exactly, it's a job. It doesn't yeah. have to. You don't have to come from shitty weird lifestyle, or you know, what I mean, or just like weird decisions or something that seemed like draw you to it. It's a lot of people are like, I can. Scientifically, do this now. Well, we, there's a, when we started, there's a thing it, I could figure out with the internet to it, make it work if it's funny enough. Sure, when I, we started doing it, it was a job you shouldn't do. Sure. <laughs> it was a job like, please, you should never fucking do this. And we're like, fuck it, I'm gonna do but it. But I think, I think there's a thing too of like, you know, to get to the the, the, the bubble popped in the sense of there's other ways in now. It's sure. like, oh, I've. This guy got big on fucking Instagram or TikTok or has a big podcast where before it was like everybody slugged it out at the clubs, at doing the check spots, doing the fucking late nights, all that kind of shit. And so everybody kind of knew everybody. And now it's like, oh, also well, this guy never worked in any. Plus it was know. a hang. The yeah. hang. People always say, how do you get in back then? It was just hang, hang out. You got hang more out. shows hanging than smoking cigs. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is you also, anything. if you met another comic, you felt like that, uh. The camaraderie immediately of like I know right busting it out mm-hmm. doing Slugging slots till it. three mm-hmm. in the morning yeah. and, bu- and when some people are like no I did like you know TikTok for it's just, it's not that you don't like them or they're shitty people you just, just don't have any kind of connection you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're like oh so I don't know what to talk to you about then you didn't sleep on a park bench before you <laughs> yeah, we out. just before we before we got here we just did our first like we catalog on Patreon we cataloged our first like three years in the village doing those bar shows and it's like. You would leave the house at 7 a.m. to go work a day job and then go down there, and you were down there till 1 a.m.? Yeah, at least. Then get on a train for There's always, like, a group of, like, when we came, the Boston crew came. Right. Yeah. Then the Philly the crew came. Yeah, 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 And yeah. it was like, let's, like... Well, um, that was kind of our, like, yeah. Keith, so it is, and people brought in the people, like... <laughs> Bobby would bring in like the Joe Lists and the blah blah, and the guys that were coming from Boston. Right. And then Keith brought in like uh, like me, Kurt, and then I we kind of ushered through that like Becky Own and mm-hmm. and DeRosa and stuff. And yeah, so there was like gaggles of people coming from places. Well, that was like Chicago crews. Yeah, it, it was people that knew people. It was like, mm-hmm. come, I'm in now. You bring. Yeah, it was like them. Monroe and Derek. Kind of then were like, all right, these guys. It was like yeah. me, yeah. him, Ian. Keith ushered in our uh, our wave too because yeah. he yeah. was yeah. friends with Cotton's uncle or something yeah. like that. So. 
Oh, now Keith is ushering in a bunch of lesbians. <laughs> 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 Keith turned into a fag hag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you got to hear stuff. It's yeah. really unique. Yeah, it's really interesting. But when we were in the village, we were you, that's what we did in Philly, was just be ruthless to each other and make fun of each other. Yeah. And when we would be able to poke our head in there, like when they're trying to get FaceTime in front of you guys, <laughs> and we'd be like <laughs> dancing <laughs> monkeys in there. Of we'd be in there trying to like make fun of each other in front of you. And then, <laughs> yeah. I, remember, I remember one time it was like, you Voss, Keith, and somebody else were sitting there, and it was basically like you were a little kid at Thanksgiving, like get up and do something, yeah. like make fun and of. And what are you? Do you're just looking. Yeah. Like, if you were quiet, just quiet, hanging in the back, and I went, Bob, Bobby hit me with. And what do you do? I was like, Ah, take a. Have you heard Amish Paradise? <laughs> but dude, the one night we were in there, we would hang out there once every couple of months. We're like, let's go in, get ah, uh, fucking Big J's there. Petrified, to petrified. Be in there. But like, you would just try to go get some fucking FaceTime. <laughs> and Voss had known us from like. Boston balls, uh -huh. and man, there was a pack of like ten of us that got a wounded Voss by himself, uh -huh. dude. <laughs> and, and relentlessly, dude. he was getting it from every uh -huh. angle, and uh -huh. he's going, "I'm still fighting, I'm still fighting." Dude, uh -huh. I've had great. that. It's the worst thing. I would always get the young guys circle <laughs> you, dude, dude, when the young lions. Yeah. I got that a couple of times, and I can see it in your eyes. I'd be sitting like, there by myself eating falafel, and all of a sudden they come in. He's alone. Yeah, I was like, like fucking make. Yeah. Move everybody's all, of, all of a sudden, the suspend suspenders weren't a good idea. <laughs> my, my boss was boss is hitting us. I never fell. I didn't fall. You know, like, he's still standing on his two feet. Yeah. I never fell. You didn't knock me down. Because uh, we brought it up to him when he did our pod. We brought it up. We're like, I don't know if you remember. He goes, Yeah, I remember. You didn't get. He didn't get me. I still was fighting. I was gonna say, not only does he remember it, he thinks about it every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real like. It's a real moment. Like a real crossroad his life he came to. He goes, oh, Maybe the old lion is time to. I remember one night. The young badgers are coming me, out. Me and Keith were out front talking to these two smoking hot Puerto Ricans, and we look, all of a sudden, Dove Davidoff, Artie, Godfrey, and Steve Byrne were just watching us talk oh. to these young girls, and me and Keith just slowly backed away, <laughs> and as we backed away, they just moved in and took them to some bar, <laughs> some after-hours place, and me and Keith just went and got food. We were like, God damn. <laughs> Dude, one of the funniest... Uh, shutdowns at the Comedy Cellar was uh, when DeRosa first started coming around and him and Steve Byrne would bullshit a bunch and hang out and Steve was way young and Steve had like two chicks or something or there was two girls hanging out with him. and he was kind of like you know giving Joe like you know like hook him, hook him with this other one like work on her and they're all sitting at that back table talking and Kurt who's an artist Kurt Metzger who's also an artist went to like art school and shit he goes over to the table where they're all at with these girls and everything and he goes, hey, I want to show you guys something, how easy it is to draw Joe DeRosa. <laughs> it's just like two sacks. <laughs> you know how someone shows you how to draw a fate, like the circle and then the cross through it for the eyes? Like, he just, it was so fast, he goes, just two sacks. And it, just, it was a perfect picture of Joe, looking like so sloppy. And gross. Dude, Joe, I think Joe ripped it up. He left the table, he was so <laughs> angry. Joe gets mad quick. Joe would get so, so angry. He's like, there's girls there, man. It's, it's He's like, I'm girls. sorry, it's just so easy to draw you. I just kept saying that. We never What's... really knew DeRosa that well, but now it's like Lucky. from doing like Hey Babe and stuff like that, yeah. we're closer with him, and man, he is the funnest just to go back and forth oh, with. Oh, yeah. He yeah. got me one time. This is this is years ago. <laughs> I was seeing a, seeing a girl uh, off and on in Philly, and he was it was when he was like coming back uh -huh. or whatever. And uh, she, they st like we were like off that week or whatever, and he was there at the show and ended up like, you know, she was like, they started, they were leaving together. <laughs> and I was there. And he didn't know. And I was Man, like, kind of. Uh, yeah, they, they were fucking my broad. Were, they were leaving together. <laughs> Joe's a piece of shit. No, he didn't know because I had just met him that night and I was running the shows. I was like, oh, thanks for having me. Weren't you, know, you on stage? You think, were like bombing think, as you saw them walk out. No. So he's like, hey, man, he's got her like under his eyes. He's like, great meeting you, man. Thanks for having me. I'm like, oh, I'll see you later, man. I texted her, you stupid whore. <laughs> How could you do that? I, I had that with God. I was just he didn't know, but the fact him not knowing, oh, he was so, know. buddy, you're the greatest, he's the greatest guy, he's leaving with my gal. I was there with one night at the Boston, and Godfrey, he's the worst, the fucking oh, worst. I mean, I came an Adonis. Out, this guy, I showed up with this girl who fucking, I thought, really liked me. Did you already hook <laughs> up with her? Dude, we were like a couple. <laughs> and then I, I go on stage, I'll, I'll be right out. She was in the room, I come he's out, on, she, she's she on left. stage, I'm seeing this girl, it's going really well. <laughs> she, she left the room while I was on stage. Went out with Godfrey, Jesus. and I saw her 
giving her, giving him her number. <laughs> As I walked out, I go, what the fuck? Jesus. And I walked out and go, she's yours now. Take her. I was like, goodbye. Yeah, I walked away. He's yeah. like, thank you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't I think that was Sorry, I'm going to shake anyway. the <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> I had to set up rules with Godfrey. I was like, listen, dude, this one's mine. The rest of yours. I kicked him under the table one night because he fucking just started talking to the one I was. It's my I'm wife, trying. Godfrey. God damn. <laughs> no, that's how I knew it was my wife. I brought it. They, Artie, and, uh, Artie and Godfrey were my chick test. I would. That's I brought funny. my wife down to the fucking cellar, uh -huh. sat him at the table. When we left, I go, "What'd you think of those guys?" She goes, "Fucking annoying." I was like, "No, nice. you're the one. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> you're the one. I love you forever." <laughs> I married her. <laughs> Shot a load and have a kid. <laughs> Joe's got one of my favorites. Some girl he hooked up with in Philly, but up. Oh, uh, yeah, it was the girl yelling at. Because he does well. For oh, he does well. Yeah, he, she had a chest tattoo. Of some it was very like it, I don't know she had a chest piercing too. Whatever it was, it just seemed very not Joe DeRosa to me. And when he told the story of hooking, that's when the girl who, when he was fucking her, goes, she goes, Joe, Joe, Joe. And then when she came, she goes, Joe DeRosa is fucking me. <laughs> oh, God. This the Sandwich name. King. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a hell of a sandwich. I can't believe Joe DeRosa. <laughs> what a low goal. I've, oh, I've had before. Featured I, at the Laugh House paid off, huh? <laughs> I don't want to move Sorry. on without saying first that Kevin and H. Foley are on the Are You Garbage Through the Roof Ooh. Tour, mm -hmm. which is going to be at Town Hall in New York City on Thursday, May 9th. Let's get go. tickets at rugarbage.com, spelled out rugarbage.com. Uh, get tickets for that. It is going to sell out. Thank you. So Thank you, quick. Buddy. Yeah. Um, I just had people this like show this paradise weekend. <laughs> they said it was fucking amazing. Your show in Boston was off the uh, Thank you. Thanks. They said yeah. it was Thank unbelievable. Um, I had one time I sent a girl like away because I have so much sympathy for me, I had a lot of when I was younger, like like the girl. Not so much thought she was with me, but like I'm putting in the work of being like nice guying to her, and we're friends and talking on the phone maybe a little bit even. And then it's like immediately hooking up with one of your friends, and you're like, uh huh. Uh -huh. I had uh, plenty of that. Yeah, so, Steve is pretty cool. <laughs> so I remember there was a girl I met in Denver. Never hooked up with this girl at all, but like she was like a podcaster. But she did something. I did the press row for Mayhem Fest, she was one of the people. And like, she was cute. And she's like a horror something chick or whatever. And then so she goes, I'm coming to another show of this uh, festival in another city. I'm like, all right, she goes, I'm coming with a friend of mine. You're like, all right, and she said it was a guy, so I was like, oh, all right, well, whatever. Um, I'll see you there. She brought this guy, it was a big fat guy. But clearly he is, wet. she she didn't even say all these things at first, like he got them a limo oh. to go to the thing, and she just keeps saying it's her friend, she introduces me to him, and he's like, it's my friend so-and-so, and then later when she's like, oh, he's just like still around, and it's like, I wanna like go hang out with you, and blah, 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 and you're just like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Like, you should go back with it. I go, I've just been that, it was all hitting me, I'm like, sure. I've been that guy so many times, I'm like, I don't wanna be this guy's like, Boogeyman in that to sense, him, yeah. where he's like, "Oh, great, dude." It's like, no, nah, I felt it, dude. I always, yeah, I always wanted to go to the guy. And go, I know what you go. I don't think she's gonna hook up with you anyway. But like, finish your night off and like, don't, because yeah. like, she's like, "Well, he can just go back, and I'll just like, you know, get a cab." Or something. it was just like so. Like, oh, she was ready to just go. It's like, no, we don't have to. I don't have to leave with him. I'm like, you do. Yeah, you really you do. Gotta the guy got a fucking <laughs> limo. It's gotta for stop you. somewhere, lady. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lonely ride in a limo. You're a goddamn hero. <laughs> just a fat, lonely guy at a McDonald's late <laughs> at night alone. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> like I felt so bad. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, dude. Godfrey, right, suck my Artie, dick real quick in the van. <laughs> Godfrey, you Artie, get out of here. Before you get out of here, <laughs> they used to fucking fuck any girl you brought down. They would try to fuck all the time. Sherrod too. Yeah. Sherrod was good. Sherrod was. Sherrod would just. Sherrod would just go up and grab her tit. <laughs> it's a different time. Shrod was the fucking worst. <laughs> Shrod's on a company in 1957 <laughs> when a broad was still a dingy broad. Shrod would walk right. up and go, yeah, Jigga, nice titties on this one, Bob. Did a good job. Yeah, Shrod would fuck anybody. <laughs> I, saw, I was with Shrod. He tugged a tampon out of a girl. Oh, Jesus. yeah, he yeah. told me that. <laughs> that was that's terrible. Ins, that's grotesque. On stage? No. Not about <laughs> pulling strings. <laughs> we, we, we were in fucking Vegas. Anybody here on the period? <laughs> Anybody on the period? I got to do a bit. We're, I can smell it. Someone is. Someone lying. Looks like you have to do the, Looks like I got the light. So, uh, anybody in here on their period, real quick? I need somebody. Somebody with the period. <laughs> we're in looks Vegas. like I got the light. We, we hooked up with a flight attendant, yeah. and I took her back to my room, and she was like, "I don't, I can't do anything." She goes, "I, I'm, I want to have fool around, but I can't, I can't have sex." You pulled a flight attendant. 
I did. Off the plane? No, in the pool at the Hard Rock. Oh. Yeah, Bobby pulled her. Godfrey knocked, or Sherrod knocked her down. <laughs> Sherrod hurt her. I, <laughs> <laughs> Bobby pretended he was drowning. He, he, went, he went like this. She was standing there naked, and she had the little thing. She pointed to it, and I was like, hey, I was like, hey, I don't want anything to do with that. He yeah. tugged it out like an old lamp. He went, duk, 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 like threw like it he's on in my the attic. Yeah. The wacky wall. <laughs> Did, um, that, I, I think that was the gig that I never got to do. I was a bummer one that I missed that just for like I would like to do it a couple times and get that fun. What was it? The Madhouse? Beaches, House? Beaches Comedy Beaches Madhouse. Comedy Madhouse was a thing out in Vegas for a little bit. At the Hard Rock. It was a guy. He had shows here. And what it, the problem was when he was here in New York, I paid him no mind. You ever do that? Uh, you, you fucking discount the wrong guy for a little bit. I was yeah. like, who's this beacher? Like, this guy is fucking. He did it at the supper club. Yeah. And it, it was, was like this a... big, huge, all kinds of bullshit, like a circus event. But it was somewhere I was like, I was like, that's the fucking comedy and blah, blah. Yeah. Then he got a deal with the Hard Rock. Right, the Hard Rock, hard, the Hard, hard Rock, rock in, in Vegas, and it became a place where it was like the Paris, and, and you know, at the time where that ma- Paris Hilton and the sure. Richie girl and and the Arquettes and everything was it, was it was a scene. And then, I mean, I heard by the end, this guy before the bubble burst, which it burst somehow. I heard from several comics. You go there, it's like, oh, they'll just send you a hooker up to your room. Hey, you want a hooker before the show? Like a hooker will just come up for you. I told you, you they, the first time there. Like for, for free, though. Like they, 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 they take the, care of it. That's like crazy. That's what, you're, said, that's said, what you're on the hook for. At that I can point get a my, hooker, but for free. <laughs> at that point in my life, a free hooker? Free hooker. My first night there, this no, girl, I don't know if you guys know, girl knocks on the door. <laughs> Beautiful, regular-looking girl. Beautiful, you know, not, dungaree. You know. I don't need any ice. Thank you. <laughs> she, she, hold on, did you say dungarees? Yeah, like, you know, like the. Did you say dungarees? Yeah, dungarees. What is it called? She wore thick, <laughs> thick yeah. seam no, dungarees, dungarees in case she gets like dragged by a horse. A, a dungaree jacket. What is it called? Dungarees. Jeans. Jean, jean jacket. jacket. Dungarees. Well, dungaree. What do you get though? Jean jacket. <laughs> Just a regular chick. I so like them dungarees. I, I thought she was. I thought she was a fan. You know, she she goes, "Hey, Robert." So she came in. We're hanging out, talking, shooting the shit. She's like, and "Bobby, then, you know these dungarees can block a bullet." <laughs> <laughs> she, she was, then we start. She goes. She put on music. Started dancing. And then I started dancing with her. Oh, and we're, then we started making out. Okay. And then we went in the bed and we started you think you kissing. You were dreaming. <laughs> it sounds like a dream. No, I'm saying it sounds like. Were you like? It was, this is great. We're it was, dancing. It was, incre- it was incredible. How then high we, of a fever did you have? <laughs> then, then we're making out. And then we. What started, it would take for me to get up and dance with a girl in my, in my, oh, by we started, myself? Sure. We started. We started. <laughs> we started making out. And then we started. You know, I went down on her. And I, I, I made her have an orgasm. I made her come. You don't have to whisper. And, and, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to make it sexy. And then uh, it's like a sleepover. And then I gave her part of myself. <laughs> so, I, so I made her come like twice, and she's like, "Let me, let me get you." And I'm like, "No, no, no, no." Later, later, because she was so hot. I liked her. I kind of liked her. And I was like, come back later. She goes, all right, we'll hook up later. I'm like, yeah, we'll hook up later. Because the show was that night. We're going to have this big thing. So then she left, and I go, we'll meet you later at the show. But like, okay, cool, I'll see you at the show. And my phone rang. It was Beecher. He goes, how was it? I go, what? I go, the, gr- the girl. I go, oh, dude, she was amazing, dude. I went down on her. She's going to meet me later. He goes, you what? I went, I go, it made her come like three times. He's like, dude, you... <laughs> That was a five hundred dollar hooker. I go, uh, what? He goes, you just and she what? He goes, she you were in her first stop. Like, uh, I was gonna say you beat her come three times. She just goes, left my she, room. He goes, that wasn't her coming. That was just other load coming out of her. <laughs> I was like, Egh. you just slopped up half a you're Cleveland. Like, oh my god, you're coming so much, lady. <laughs> so fucking bad. drown me. Yeah. That place was nuts. Awesome. Nuts. Well, I didn't want that to happen to me, but I, uh, yeah, I do like it? the. He's got it going on again. Yeah, he's, it's happening again. The show? Yeah, he's got a new uh, venue. He lost all the weight. He lost a lot of he weight. Lost, huh? Yeah, he got Look the at surgery. That. He got the surgery, and now he's all into health and shit, but he lost uh, yeah, he lost all the weight, but he's got the new show going, but it's not going to be the same. I mean, the Hard Rock uh, the hard rock in the early 2000s was fucking anarchy. It that was pool, crazy. It was, what was the pool called? Rehab? It was called Rehab oh, on Sunday. Oh, yeah. So you'd go Didn't in they on, do a show about that? You'd go in on Yeah, there was like, yeah, I think there was like a A&E shit. You'd like, go in on oh, the bouncers yeah, yeah. You'd go in on Wednesdays and leave on Monday. But the show was Saturday, and all you had to do was 15 minutes. Really? Jesus. That, it was crazy. The rest dude. of the time, just sucking hooker pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Licking loads. <laughs> Dancing in the room. <laughs> I like how he told us that story. He's like, the rest of the time was great. <laughs> yeah, everything else was good. Once I barfed up load. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, dancing in your room, man. Mm, but yeah, I didn't, crazy. I never had a dude. If a girl knocked on my door and then started, I'd be like, "You are for sure in the wrong room. <laughs> yeah. goes, uh, are you sure we're on the right floor here? Like, there's no way <laughs> this is for me." You start looking at the door numbers. This is the right. <laughs> let me see your information. Let me see your paperwork. Did someone text no, you? Oh, look something? right here. It says seventh floor. This is nine. <laughs> nine. Nueve. I, wasn't, I thought I was famous and I wasn't even on anything. Yeah. <laughs> you saw me at the Chuckle Hut. <laughs> I never I had love that level of ego. That's yeah. great. The most I you're got... probably big fan of mine. Were you at the Funny Bone? <laughs> <laughs> at a half sold show on Saturday night. Most... Did you get a free ticket to see me on a Wednesday? <laughs> the most I got like a situation like that where someone was like laying it out that hard was that guy uh, Brant from Chicago Ooh. who had that uh, no you definitely oh, yeah, had that club too he had like that oh, so, he had like that kind of B club it was a uh, yeah it was called Riddles Riddles, Riddles was and great he was a guy pretty, that, a pretty he, good bad comedy club name he wanted to show you the town mm -hmm. uh, so much and so he would take it and the one that's like we go to strip clubs all the time and so okay and he just bought so many lap dances which were hilariously aggressive but I'm just not it's just not my personality of lap. I'm in all kinds of filthy shit. Just some reason lap dances again. It's too like, hey girl, fake giving a shit for a song sure. and whatever. It just doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. He goes, so it's just funny. This guy kept paying. I, t I go, buddy, you don't have to keep buying me lap. I just go back there and I tell him. I go, how long have you been working here? Yeah, I used to drive girls to bachelor. I'm just like trying to like shop talk with them. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Try to befriend them. Yeah. The one girl had like 16 like. Pussy lip piercings and shit. I'm like, you get your W nine yet? I go, <laughs> <laughs> they're dragging her feet like usual, huh? You know, you could write those panties off. I don't know if they. That's <laughs> a nice butt plug you got there. <laughs> Is that a Clemens? You got a Clemens butt plug? <laughs> What's the brand on that? I like the Hardings myself, but uh, I use the TK nine. You know, the, the glass ones are a little better for your uh, overall long term health, but microplastics are bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> don't go right in. That's They'll absorb through your rectum. I don't like lap dances either, man. I no, fucking, they're boring. Too transactional. It's like too, if you're, you have to be in the Disneyland. You have to go in and be like, oh, you got to be drunk or fucked up for me to buy into like, this one likes me. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah, I, yeah. I did them a bunch when I was like in my early 20s, like when you do go and stuff. And now I'm just like, this is what stupid. It, this is like, just get out of here. That's the, uh, that guy, Brent, they opened up the other club in Kalamazoo, Michigan called the that. Laughing Post. Laughing Post. And I went out there and did that once. Next time I did it, they lied. I was supposed to do it. They lied and kept saying something happened. It and it flooded. But then it was they were just not paying people, so I just ah, never shit. went How back. How long ago? This was like 10 years ago, right? This was at, a least. Little, at least 10 years ago. Isn't it crazy how like it completely just changes? Like It just rises and falls and washes away. And like all those places that you were so used to going, they disappear. And, and different yeah, ones so, pop up. It's weird. You something that's part of your daily. Some part of it's part of your like daily, or you know, you, just, you know it so well. And then it's just, yeah. Not but you, knew that, so you know that guy... You know, you'd show up. He had a masseuse in the fucking green room but, oh, that yeah. would massage you between shows. Sure. He was just shitting money he out. Yeah, no too way much. this is going to last. But and it's so, like a constant reality switch. You never get into the thing that you envisioned when you were coming up. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Yes. Like, yeah, I do know what you mean. There's a few things. The institute, like the cellar and of stuff course. like that. But of course. But all aside, it's like, yeah. Well, I mean, at one point, the Boston Comedy Club was my every night. It was just yeah, kind of like, well, this best. is my job. This is what sure. I do. And then you're like, oh, it doesn't even exist anymore. It has yeah. But I would time. argue, like, the cellar that we got into, you guys are like, that's not the cellar sure. that I had. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. It well, is a very different experience. Yeah, it's it's, it's a lot different now. Sure. But it, 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 you know. It's weird. It's just, it's a. I don't know if to say it was better or worse because I, I. But don't yeah, know. it's just That's, different. That club riddle still exists, but the guy that his uncle he bought it off of, he bought it from his uncle and then started bringing New York guys in. Yeah. He was like, I'm not bringing because his uncle would just bring in these fucking. Yeah, the dinosaurs. Acts. It'd be like, it's yeah. like so. Once you started seeing it, it was everyone. It would be like, uh, it was like me and Bobby and all these people, and then still like they're just waiting to move like Jimmy Dino, JJ sure. Dynamite Walker, you know, like yeah, stuff. Yeah. It was all those people. But the Kalamazoo one I did the one night, that was the night I always remember that club was one. I was there. I was worried I wasn't going to get out the next day because there was a storm, big storm coming. It was winter. I did the show. After the show, a girl, it was a, a couple that had a girl with them that was a stripper. She was gorgeous. And she goes in the back with me after the show in like the green room area and starts, like, we're like making out. She's like saying she wants to come back to the hotel. And I was like, this, it was so aggressive where I was like, Oh, wow, yeah, great. Mm -hmm. And then she comes back in the green room like five minutes later and she goes, I forgot. Like, 
It's like the reason sucks, dude. She goes, I told the couple I'm with that I was going to have a threesome with them tonight. So, like, I can't, blah, blah. And I was like, no, but you see them all the time. Yeah, and you can blah. Blah. Down for the weekend. And she was like, and she was like, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I got to go. I'm like, oh. And it was one of those, like, <laughs> you took some food home from the club said, that if she, night. If we just made out and she was like, I'm leaving, I'd be like, great. Yeah, right. Well, well no, I didn't. I should have just done that. What I did was I went, there was a bar upstairs. Fill that hole. Real college. I had to fill the hole. <laughs> yeah, dude. There was a college bar upstairs. That was closing. Yeah. And I go, one last ditch effort. Last act of a desperate man. <laughs> and this there. is so not even my personality, but enough people were with me from the club that I had a comfort of like some people will laugh if I go in there like trying to swag. just big dick yeah. and like like but being funny, but whatever. And I was like, who's taking me home? And blah blah blah. Back to my thing. And some girl, some like chubby softball looking the party college girl. <laughs> <laughs> Just a rhino on the other end. It a wasn't pair of dungarees. Yeah. It wasn't She's that bad, a, but it was just like a forgettable. Wing. coming out of her nose. She has a pork chicken wing in her hand. <laughs> just a completely forgettable, like whatever it is. I just remember, just it was like you know, like a ho hum. She's wearing a blouse. Like, she's probably thinking the same thing about me, by the way. Uh, in fairness, we go back to the. She carries you out <laughs> <laughs> through the threshold. Yeah. Where are we doing it? Yeah, all the way back to her apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Flying sixty nine. You went upside. Side down or right side up? <laughs> um, I could do either. I'm, I'm verse. Let me get my pantyhose off. <laughs> so, get over here, pretty boy. Oh, no, she was like a, I said it was like a collegey softball looking kind of chick, and she uh, comes back to the room, and I, or, uh, so I was like, "Oh, you want to come in?" For she was like, "Yeah." She's like, "I'm not having sex though, or anything," and I'm like, "Yeah, it's fine. I get, like it's fine. Like <laughs> nice I'm not gonna." You. I'm like, "There's I go, maybe it's, I go, but you know, I was like maybe something. I don't know. Like I was eat, so though. horny. We're gonna eat, right? No food yet. <laughs> no food at all, actually." And I just, all I remember this for was that it's it was what made me realize that I was like when I give myself too much credit for like yeah I'm actually not like a talk that shit and convince anybody like I'm a really you know kind of nervous thing I'm like when it's the right point I, this girl was going like yeah I don't, I'm sorry I'm not gonna have sex with you like I think you're kid or whatever but like it's I'm not in the one night stands especially like one night stands like guys that they don't want you to stay over the night which is certainly what I would want is not to stay them sure. to stay over the night. And uh, I was like, and I swear to you, when she said that, she was like, it's just guys, like, it's like they can have sex with you and then they just want you to leave. And I was like, I hate when guys do that. <laughs> I was I'm like, it really makes me sick that, like, guys, it's like you just let a, a woman let you inside of her and then you can't, like, sleep next to them. Like, fucking, that's crazy. I don't like that at all. And then a couple of a couple, snoring all a night. couple of jibber jabs later, yeah, you're making she tea. Let me, dude, this is the only time in my life I've ever been. She tit fucked me to completion <laughs> because it just it was all that was gonna happen. And uh, and I remember what an inconvenience for her. Yeah, and uh, and then I went to the bathroom. Went to tit fuck Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Jay's I mean, gonna make her stay. Goes, I got a nice cleavage, but I don't know if it's gonna hold that clit in place. <laughs> Um, I mean, that's just a lot. But I titty fucked it. But I was, all I remember from that whole thing was going, that line of shit where I was like, I know, I hate the guys say that. And then and then they say they want to be with you, but then they can't even have you spend the night. And I went to take my after cum piss. And I remember I couldn't get through it. I laughed out loud because I just, in the middle of the sentence, I thought that I started peeing going, you might want to get out of here before that storm comes, though. You know, you get stuck in <laughs> This girl, I mean, I would put my hand on her shoulder to be like, I'm sorry men have treated you like that in the past. I'm not that guy. I'm just going to tit fuck you. And you can take a nap, but you can't stay the night. I'll give you I'll give you a solid 30 minutes, but that's it. What, very, like one Sober night stand. Sober up a little bit. One I night read stand. to the blind in an hour. I apologize. Through my life, one night stand, like, stayovers are... are it's never great. It's the worst. It's I never... was always totally I okay with it. I, yeah, not, you're you're my like... girlfriend for the night. That's yeah. the way I see it. I'm not not okay. If I could just pr if it makes sense, very insecure about my sleep, like, like me snoring first. Of oh, all. it's bad. Yeah. So like, I'm just worried that it's gonna be. I'm gonna be gross to them. F fucking again in the morning, someone that you're probably never gonna see again is f is fun, but I can ditch that. For the sake of it just being sure. like, it's like, you know what, dude, let's Let me just get a good like, sack time. Because everything was cool. Everything was cool up until then. At the end. Now you're going to see, like, you know, like, <laughs> like I don't know, I don't know. at the end of when my, when I had my hair started to go, 
I used to have to make my hair. Oh shit! <laughs> like I used to have to like, you know, kind of push it down Do it. and quaff yeah. it up. Yeah. And I didn't want a girl staying over because the next day, my hair, my my receding hairline would be showing. So I had to get you these look like Johnny out. Gasparo. Yeah, I looked like a different person the next day. So I had to get the girls out because I didn't want to. Because that when you saw me, I looked like New Kids in the Block. The next day, I looked like Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Just morning, whatever. Oh. Like I used to tell the girls, I have an audition or I have a meeting in the morning, like early. So I would, I would literally get up with them and walk them to the subway, and be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna take the cab, or I'm gonna, I, I gotta go another subway." Oh, yeah. One girl was like, "Which subway are you taking?" I was like, "I gotta take the six down to." Oh, I'm taking that one. I had to take the subway down to Wall Street. <laughs> At six in the morning, and then take it all the way back up to 97th Street to go back to bed. Grab a bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Adam Myers has a good, like, you, you can't hang. I think it's always like, I got to do a riding package for HBO. It's always like HBO or <laughs> something. Just super specific. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Well, you see, I got to do a riding package. There's a new show. He just makes up a whole thing. There's a new show coming out. This is going to be Jada Pinkett's big foray back into acting. And you see, I'd be going for the role. <laughs> I did that uh, when we were at the Lantern. Brutal and uh, this all time bozo move. This the hottest oh, girl, man. the hottest girl that I've ever seen in my life was for some reason at the show. And I went up, and when they brought me up, they said he's filming something or he's 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 on some show or I something. I think you like might that. have. Oh, had, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would pro- I, if we were at the Lantern, I was probably the one that was hosting. If I brought you up as like, this next guy's filming something for HBO because <laughs> this fucking girl was there. <laughs> And I went up there, and afterwards we're talking and we're hanging out. She's like, what are you filming? And I, I said, Boardwalk Empire. I just made something up. <laughs> <laughs> so we went back. I Which sta- a buddy of ours was filming. Like, we saw that week. He was like an extra in it. Yeah. And he's like, I was filming Boardwalk Empire tomorrow or yes, something. That's a good... If I believe you, someone will believe, believe me. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we hooked up, and I was head over heels. Like, I sent her this email about how her hair smelled. And I'll just... It, dude, they said it. He, he showed us the email. He's like, I'm thinking about sending in this and we're like absolutely <laughs> do not send that and he's like I already sent it we're like what but I told her that I was ha- with Lewis with his poem yeah that's exactly what happened Lewis yeah. goes so I wrote this poem I go don't sign it though he goes too late like, too late I, for you I told her I had to be on set early that morning and we could hang out the next day so I went and got my hair cut like in the 20s like I literally it was, like, <laughs> got like the high part you, you, you wanna get your well, I had to look the part <laughs> you got a Barton Fink <laughs> give me a Barton Fink <laughs> could you tell her that you were gonna do it on set <laughs> no, she was, there's no way she's ever gonna be like, wait a second. Yeah, my hair your was hair all doesn't match. Did you, did you get the roll yesterday? And today was your first day filming. Yeah, she got a little thin mustache. <laughs> yeah. Hello, doll. But she never returned my email. Oh, uh, so geez. I got the yeah. haircut. I walked on like you an idiot a, for two the, weeks. The band. Yeah, the fucking uh, the garter, the yeah. arm, the arm garter. Chunky Thompson. <laughs> Chunky <laughs> Thompson. Oh, there man. was another one. Uh, you had a cl- you had another classic back in the day. There was uh, a lady who was when you you, you took the, you split the cab home. Uh huh. She, she was like, he's like, I think I got a shot with her, and we're like, no way. She was an attractive gal. We're like, no way. She was a comic. Oh fuck. Yeah. And <clears throat> attractive gal. So they're like, oh, we're I'm going uptown. I'm going uptown. It's like she was like hitting like they were, you know. But you're like in your head just visually. You're like, no fucking way. Dude, just no way. So they get in the cab and, you know, what she's like. I had no money. No money for None. the cab. Yeah. Like, I had no money for the and subway. And she was pretty successful. Yes. And I was like, uh, am I going upstairs with you or something like that? Or she's like, I'm going home alone. And I'm like, unless you can convince she me. She goes, you have 34 blocks to convince. Like, she was staying in Times Square. Room. <laughs> they were on 4th Street. She goes, you got 30 blocks. And he goes... You're the most beautiful girl I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and she starts, she starts laughing in my face. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> I think I got out of 14th Street. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Fucking strike out. You're the most beautiful girl I ever seen. Oh, first things first, <laughs> you're everything to me. <laughs> Let me read you this email. <laughs> you meant nothing. Uh, uh, yeah. Dude, that was another time we were at the fucking... Remember that that hot southern girl that I took to Mineta? 
Yeah, you got jammed up uh, in Manetta. I didn't belong to it. I had one hundred eighteen dollars to my name. <laughs> I probably got paid that day. Manetta, by the way, for the people listening, twenty six dollar hamburger. <laughs> no, it's like forty five. Is it? Cra- yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Well worth it though. So <laughs> she's like, she's hitting on me. She's older. She's like, you were funny. I'm like, I, I'm wearing dirty clothes. I'm just like a street person at this point. <laughs> We go to Manetta, and I'm like, I think I got it. I'm like, I got this. And she starts, I'm like, yeah, I'll buy you a drink. Meanwhile, to me, a $7 beer would have been like, I can't we'll afford We'll split it. a PBR. We'll, yeah, we'll split it, dude. She ordered like a martini. A Grey or... Goose martini, I remember you telling me. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know what it was at the time. <laughs> dude, and I'm, so we're at the bar, and the guys, the bartender's looking at me like, dude, you are getting ran through the, <laughs> the ringer right now. Short dude, it was like a hundred and something dollars, and then we took a cab home, and she's like, I'm getting out alone. And I was like... You're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. <laughs> I love you so much. I uh, just struck out. Just bought this girl hundreds of dollars or whatever. And like, no, I think we made out. No, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> I stabbed the driver. You're Isn't mine that, now. I want, there's, a, there's a lot of online like YouTube arguments about people saying that that's fucked up, that girls just treat dating like boozing and, and eating on the house. No, nah, I think that's all fair love and war. I think it's sort I'm of what it that, is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't assume if I took a girl on a date that she'd pay for anything on it. I couldn't, man. And, it, dude, when I was waiting tables, I would see that shit, and I would see, like, some dime piece in there with, like, some okay guy, and they're splitting the check. I'm like, what the fuck? You're dude, st- Christine, still going to fuck this guy? Christine's uh, uh, t- paid for guys' cabs to come ha- hook up with her before. It's bad shit. I never That's paid crazy. for girls, ever, ever. Really? No, I had one girl that used to want to have sex with me. And she just talked too much. So I was like, listen, I'll come down. You have to pay for my cab. You have to get me a chicken cutlet sandwich with a bag of chips and a Gatorade. You like a black dude. You, you That's can't, crazy. You can't talk. Gigolo Bobby. You yeah. can't talk. She was morbidly obese. No, she was smoking hot blonde. You can't talk. She just talked a lot. I go, you can't talk until after I eat. coming your way. And then we would have sex. And then after we had sex... Uh, you could talk and 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 you know, but I'm gonna go to sleep too. So and she would agree to it after the chicken cutlet sandwich. After the chi- you can't talk to her on the chicken. I would sit there and just eat my chicken cutlet and watch TV. What a dirt ball. Yeah. Chicken While she looks cutlet. at you, she's just flicking her bean waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, I I don't I didn't pay for shit. I used to go to the French roast. That was my jam. I go to the French roast and get him a coffee. That restaurant? Yeah, the on ones the in corner. the city. Yeah, on the corner. I, would go I there. applied there for a job. Yeah, I, shut down. Coffee place only. I would never take a girl out to eat. Really? Never, no, I'm not, I never took. I had no money. Drinks, though. I was living with Billy Byrne, an African dude on 97th Street. I had no money. I had shit. I would would never do that. Even my wife now, she used to pay for everything back in the (laughs) day. Well, that's so dude. Lewis and them. Lewis and them used to real charmer, Bobby. (laughs) Lewis and them were like, his his, crew of guys were good at just finding like these shit. And they were good. They would chat up like girls, like young girls that were like rich parents because like Manhattan kids and stuff. And just get them. They would cash, yeah. They would pay for everything. I used to bang the chick across from the cellar. Her father owned Man Chinese Theater or her grandfather. Uh She had like tons of cash. I would just bang her so I had a place to go in between sets. (laughs) I would go over there, bang her, take a nap, go back and do my late night at the cellar because that's Was it one of those window apartments that's like right across from the cellar? No, no, that was where Bert lived. It was like two down. Who lived there? Uh, this girl, I forget her name. The last name was Man. She was a she was a he singer. Said Bert, no, Bert, Bert, I think Bert lived right across the street. Yeah. Bert, Bert had an apartment across the street from the cellar. Yeah, really? Oh yeah, yeah. He had a bunk bed. <laughs> he had like a studio apartment with a bunk bed when he first That's moved. Hilarious. Yeah, moved. those are like four grand now. Oh, they're probably <laughs> more than places. that. Yeah, four. Yeah, next across the street from the cellar, more a month. Oh, I bet not one of them starts less than like. Six, eight, yeah. yeah. I'd say eight. Yeah, when I first, I was paying three twenty-five a month. Oh yeah, for well, my apartment. That's wild. Right. Yeah, yeah. The times are different. Times are different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think for something like Did that, you have to pay be... for a broad and you get a chicken cutlet sandwich. <laughs> well, it's funny. That was also the thing. Uh, the cellar was great at that point. We were young comics too because NYU's dorms were right mm. there. I've been in there many. So you nights. get an influx of that. I never went in there to fuck. I went in there to. I went in there to take a shower and change, and thought in maybe in the dorms. I thought maybe well, it was with a, like a girl that I knew uh, in there. Yeah, but she was. It was the girl. I thought like uh, I don't know why I liked her so much too, but like I think she was she was super into Artie Fuqua, Ugh. but she was like his friend. But it was the. Uh, do you remember her? The, Artie the tall, does well. The basketball. The tall basketball oh. player girl and her voice, dude. Metzger is the one that got me not giving a shit about that girl anymore because just doing her voice. Because every time she comes up, she goes, Hey, is Audie here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, I think she did show me her cans once, and they were nothing shy 
of mega disappointing. <laughs> they were fuck because she had like big, huge tits and she sure. was like tall and thin, like pretty. Like she would get, they would get dressed up. Her and her friends would get dressed up and shit and come out all slutty on the weekends to the yeah. to the club and shit to the cellar, and like they looked good. And then just I forget why or what the reason was, but they showed her maybe it was a picture or something. But they were just all sag, yeah. nothing in them at all. Yeah, empty bags with like. Uh. A rock in the bottom just to keep them down, <laughs> <laughs> so the elements don't raise them up. <laughs> just so the elements don't raise them. Yeah, the, the New York dorms. I used to go there a lot. No, because all those girls used to come over to the crazy. cellar late night. They would come over to the cellar and hang out. I went there one night. And I was <laughs> there was an artist girl, and I she had just this big hairy box. And I was, I was just looking at it like, what? The, I don't even know what the f- how to get to it. And then I went down. and It smelled ah. weird. It, and she go, and I, I went, woof. It's like you came up in the seventies. She, you she, she Rent goes, was a quarter. You call that a muff? Yeah. <laughs> she, 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 she went like this. She went, if you don't like the taste of pussy, then don't eat pussy, pussy. And Jeez. I was like, all right. She just alpha mailed me into eating her horrible box. Can I have a chicken sandwich, please? I'm realizing now as I think about it, I've also had, I don't know why I was always so surprised by this, Like, but if I would pull like the comedy, like the New York comedy club, like one of the clubs in the city, like that night, like when there's girls hanging out, like if I, I don't know why I was always blown away by that girl pretty quickly always being like, I'll suck on any of your friend's dicks too if you want. <laughs> like, really, and I'm like, and then I'd be like, especially with one dude, it was the funny, poor Dave Smith dude, what I put him through. I was like, this girl's pretty like, wild like she's really cute and like she just wants to fuck and stuff like i think she'd fuck whatever so if you want to go hang out at her house later with me probably get your dick sucked no problem and then uh (laughs) she sucked my dick and then uh i was like poor dave's just sitting over there whatever she goes she goes, tell him to pull his dick. She goes, well, Dave should pull his dick out, and I'll suck that too. And I went, no, wait. <laughs> and I stopped it. Why? And then we, and I don't love remember. Her. Whatever. <laughs> what did you say? He was in love no, with her. Because I was badly in love with her. Yeah. That was clearly the issue. What the fuck? Why? Because <laughs> I was an insecure idiot, so it would be like, I mean, I still am, but I understand the world sure, now a little more. Sure, sure, so sure. it's like, uh, I just saw that. I didn't see that coming. And when she, the second she was like, I thought she was going to be like, Oh, I don't know about that. I'm like, sorry, Dave, we tried, bro. You know what I mean? Like, she's super into me, I guess. The fact that right away she was like, I will suck whatever cock is in this room. I go, stop! I told you my dreams. You told me yours. I we fell asleep on the phone you. together. Man, talk about a different come up. Can you imagine that? We'd maybe split a slice at Percy's. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You guys were fucking. It's different now. Oh, no. Man. Well, also, also, that particular group. I mean, listen, it's so funny girls that everyone's adults now and everything. No, it's not even the girls, though. It's like we were older I was as with well. A, I was with a. I mean, I rolled with a scuzz bunch that was inspired by the scuzz elders being the sure. Bobbies, the Keiths, and everything. <laughs> Keith and these guys weren't guys at that age that were going like, "Hey, that's not cool. Don't you have a girl at home?" <laughs> They're like, "You get this one, you get that one. Always delete this. Never show this." <laughs> Well, I mean, when we were coming up, Foley was 38, and I was bald- <laughs> I was balding at 27. So it'd be weird. A girl who wants to fuck either one of us ain't great. No, no, no. These yeah. girls I'm talking about would have. <laughs> These are things. I mean, me and yeah, Lewis. You, you guys are a type. Yeah. You're a thing. Sure. A niche market. Oh. I'm into that. Yeah. yeah. We, were, we were what you call a fetish. <laughs> I'm into Laurel and but Hardy. You're right. You're also right. That is that is a lot of what I it was, though, too. Fellow fantasy. <laughs> I started at 19, and then I'm becoming friends with Lewis and them when I'm like 24, yeah. and they're like 22 or whatever, you know, yeah, 21. Yeah, yeah. So it was like everyone was just like. He was young my age and, now when I met him. Yeah, so it'd be yeah. weird to be like. Yeah, I, was 30, like dude, I was 32 when I started. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So that's what I was just starting younger. But, so I just had these guys. We went through like your scum. Like we didn't go to college, none of us yeah. really. You know what I mean? It was like we were living college like through that. Yeah. And stuff. But of yeah. But guided by the filthiest of filthy. Yeah. I mean, Patrice was definitely not going to be like, you should be good to people. <laughs> All he said when I got caught bad with my ex-wife one time was he came in, he goes, he goes, uh, she ain't got a shot no more? She ain't got no shot of working out? I was like, I don't know. And he was like, well, I did my part. And he walked out of the room. <laughs> I did my due diligence. Because <laughs> he's new, you know, he knew my ex, so he was like, she ain't got a chance then? Mm-hmm. It can't have to be worked out? I was like, I don't know, man. He goes, well, I did everything I could do. <laughs> walked out of the comic strip. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my whole part. Tilts his hat good days. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> but I tell you, Patrice also, like, he's the one, a girl I was, like, seeing on the side, 
is he ruined her for me by <laughs> the naked picture I had that I thought was the best. And it was just, <laughs> right, she's had no boobs, no hips, no nothing. Now, she is was this just, a real the, photograph? Real photograph. She took, she opened her uh, towel for me to take a picture, and I took a picture, and I was so excited to show Patrice that, like... Was it a Polaroid? Uh, no, 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 it was like a, no, cell phone, but it was oh, a bit of flip. Oh, it was flip. actually a, a right. sketch that he did on a ship on the way over here. It's, it might as well be, it was a flip phone it picture. Was whale bone. <laughs> it was scrimshaw. Squid, yeah. <laughs> Squid ink. <laughs> Looks like a murder scene when you show it to people. Well, no, she was just. It's it, a she, goddamn cadaver. It's really, but Patrice just said, what he, what he said was, uh, I was like, Patrice, look at this chick. And in my mind, I'm like, he's a big guy, I'm a big guy. We're, our big celebrations sometimes when you, before you realize, like, there are not obese women that like big guys sure. or whatever. And you just can't believe it. I'm like, look at this chick. And he just goes, yo, that bitch looks like Buffalo Bill. Like, talking about <laughs> tucking a dick and opening the thing like that. I could never unsee it. it yeah. <laughs> That's brutal. Was sort of over the chick and then got caught like days later. Really? Yeah, bad. Bad catch. Oh. Yeah, I wish I would have showed Patrice that picture earlier. And be like, oh, yeah, right. She does look like Buffalo Bill. <laughs> I was like, but she's thin. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> oh, she's not fat like me. <laughs> Christine brought up the yeah. picture of Buffalo Bill. Hello, she's not Jack. fat like me. Isn't that nuts? So someone's out there that'll do that? <laughs> I remember thinking that as a young kid. Girls will have sex I'm with just me. Viewing, it's crazy. Who is fucking, I remember as like a young kid of going, how are fat, are fat people having sex? Yeah. And I remember, because I go, and I wouldn't do that. And I remember, as a fat kid, but I remember thinking like, I remember, I don't know why it was, Missy Elliott, I was like seven, and I'm like, she was singing about like sex, and I'm like, who is having sex with her <laughs> oh, yeah. that would have sex with anyone else? I'm like, she's got to be lying in the spirit. <laughs> Bullshit. No, and then I go, oh, I'm like, oh, yeah, fat people are fucking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you discovered the taste of the thin black man. <laughs> <laughs> but fat white guys don't have the thin black woman looking for us. It has not yeah. gone both ways. It has not gone both ways. It's hard out there. <laughs> it's hard out there for a fat white guy <laughs> who loves you except toothless fat white women. <laughs> That's what I always thought. I go, well, I better start to like bottom of the barrel missing tooth animals, I guess. Sure. You know what I mean? Uh, because like that's what's probably gonna like. So I was blown away by any girl who I thought was attractive that was throwing it back yeah. at all. I'd be like, "You're the one." I, can't I would get it. into a six who wasn't even throwing it back at me. But if I can, <laughs> if, I can if I put two years in on her, I think I can convince her. You know what I mean? Swing low. Just yeah, just like <laughs> all right, she's not a mutant. All right, I'm in. Cast you know? a wide net. Yeah. yeah, I used to think about. I used to fantasize about. Uh, Pretty girls with major disabilities. I could take, like, a taking care of a yeah. beautiful blind girl Dude. or a deaf chick. <laughs> there yeah. was a girl, a hot girl in our town that was like, I forget exactly. She was missing something. I forget what it was. A finger or a hand, but I remember being like, everybody was like, ooh wee. And I worked with a woman uh, <laughs> who was missing a hand. And she, I mean, I was in love with her. She was Vietnamese. I was in love with her, dude. And I she, did she like, lose it in Nam? <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn booby traps are everywhere, huh? She was 90. <laughs> she, she lost it in a hole. <laughs> I remember being like, if I could, I remember spinning it to my family. I'm like, she's, she's got a wax hand, but it's okay. A yeah. wax? It was, it took me, it took me 18 months to realize it was fake. That's how in love with her I was. It's a wax hand. <laughs> she, she put it down to like go over. Over, like a document on my desk, and it was like, I was like, ah! <laughs> it looked like chums. She goes, chums! We gotta so move. Gilmore. We gotta move here to here, and then back to here. It's like, it's so heavy. <laughs> it looked like, whenever you like, turn, like on the boardwalk, you would turn your hand into like a wax candle. Uh, That's what it looked like. <laughs> Dude, Metzger used to have a joke about that, uh, about the girl, because it was, it was about a girl we met one night at Stand Up New York years ago, who was, I mean, the guys were, everyone outside was fawning on her. This is like the Lewis uh, shows up there, Dave's. And everyone was all over this chick. And it, and what it was was she just had like a little something that would be considered a hand right after the elbow area. Ah, uh, that's too much for just me. Much, but, uh, you can lose an extremity. But, but Kirk <laughs> described it. He was like, it looks like you could have just tugged on it and pulled out like oh. two more foot of good arm. <laughs> I hate that. When they Telescopic. Leave, when, they, when they leave the little nub, it's like, cut that part off. Uh, take it all off, you weirdo. <laughs> but um, no, but I would definitely like... Yeah, that like a pretty blind girl. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, a pretty blind uh, that, girl's that, a lot. That but probably sure. got me from what it was was probably the film Mask with Cher, 
when Laura Dern was blind, remember? And she was like, I don't care. I don't. I haven't yeah. seen it, but. Yeah. She's you never feel, saw Mask with Cher? She's right. feeling Dude, trash, his head. Trash, classic. Eric <laughs> stole it. Goes trash, for, it goes for five minutes. She's going down <laughs> yeah, his head. <laughs> uh, the year, family guy did a pretty funny thing with that. They were like, uh, they did a thing of that scene. And she's like, I want, she's like, I want to feel your face. I don't care. It's about what's inside you that counts. And then she's going like, oh, oh, boy. She goes, oh, I mean, there's only so much. I didn't picture this. <laughs> like, she's like, so like. She just gets nastier and nastier. She touches the front. <laughs> That's fucking yeah, there it is. That's Eric Stoltz. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know what? I can get a super hot blind chick who loves horses, oh, too. Oh, I didn't know that's what that movie... I didn't know that's... I've seen parts of it. I didn't know that's what it was. It's called Mask. Yeah, that's yeah. what she's feeling his face, and she's like, I fucked up. Yeah, she's like, oh, my God, did I kiss this? Yeah. How did I not know he has no nose? How face you, like a snowshoe. How can, you not, <laughs> how can you not smell his mouth? <laughs> Are you always carrying around a dead rat in your mouth? <laughs> Jesus. Well, you understand my teeth are all made of something different. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, they did him up. <laughs> Fell in love with hot-ass Laura Dern. <laughs> your mom's ass. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this Jerry's got a diamond in his beard? It is. Give me a taste. Rockin' and we're laughin' and we're singin' this song Robin's diamonds, you can't go wrong Gems can't show you what it's all about Robin Robin's diamonds Lots of people think that's really weird. Get your rock and Robin's diamonds and we'll rock, he was into some weird shit. Oh, dude. Yeah. I mean, that seems that was shot in 1984, but the, the website's listed. This guy oh, was wow. A, this guy's a goddamn innovator. What Rebranded, the fuck? baby. I did that, was, dude, that was shot in 82. <laughs> Check He's us got out the on first TikTok website. and Instagram. That's a dot com. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. It's a website. <laughs> is, it still, is it still up? I thought around? that was pure. From the 70s, <laughs> yeah. early 80s. This isn't, this didn't like turn into Robin's Brothers. It's just a coincidence that like the largest engagement ring store is also Robin's. Oh, I don't know. That's probably it. I'm sure it's it. Yeah, I would assume. In Philly? No, Robin's Brothers is like well, I don't know. Oh, no. does one of them have a diamond in his beard? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this guy was ahead of the time. <laughs> God, that guy definitely crushed ass. <sighs> sure. And like 80s Farrah you know, Fawcett you, you hair. Know, yeah, Imagine him walking into bookbinders <laughs> <on, laughs> in Philly. Good night. Good night. Get his any pants. table at Ralph's. I'll tell you that much. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> did you know? Um, we did. We did it on the pod. Did you? Did you know the TNT amusement infomercial? Um, no. From TNT Amusement, a local inf infomercial where this guy sold uh, arcade games. Uh -huh. And then he was just at one time, he was like, oh, fuck it. I have all these arcade games. I can just turn it in. I can have birthday arcade. parties here. Yeah. And man, it's fucking, he, this guy's insane. It's He's my favorite person in the world. But <laughs> he shot this all, and it was all edited in the in the camera. <laughs> Dude, she has wait, go oh, back to her. A stop. It's she has a stop. the best Philly accent in the world. Looks like Ron on Hirschberg. <laughs> Pam Tucky. I became engaged. Won a pinball machine to Pam. Pam, maybe you'd like to explain how our parties work. Pause this by the way. This is a guy that doesn't know how to spend his father's money. It's got to be. No, I don't know. We, dude, so he's this, still banging. He's still banging. So we called him. We we're like, let's see if it's still open. So we call because I was like, yo, for the Patreon or whatever, we should have a fucking party at TNT <laughs> if it's still open. So I call. He answered the phone. <laughs> Todd Tucky answered the phone. And he, I go, hey, man, is this Todd? He goes, yeah. I go, buddy, big fan. I grew up going to birthday parties there. We're watching the infomercials. We love it. And he's like, oh, thanks. And I was like, yeah, I'm just calling my buddies. We're thinking about having a party. It's his bachelorette <laughs> party or a bachelor party or whatever. He's like, okay, well, I can get you in Tonight around six thirty. I'm like tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's closing on the dude. It was it. like it was like four forty five. He still got it. He still got it. I'm getting in right now. <laughs> a bachelor party goes. What are they getting? Video games? <laughs> Maybe a novelty fat uh, stripper. She's great. Pam Tucky. I'm the host here at TNT. My job here is to set up the party, serve your guests, and clean up afterwards. We have full use of our kitchen. Refrigerator, freezer. Frigerator. She says refrigerator. 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 <laughs> yeah, you get full use of everything. Refrigerator. Um, <laughs> microwave. Yeah, don't drink my dad's sunny day. He gets pissed. <laughs> we were having them. We want to have them. Who ate all the turkey? <laughs> <laughs> you can make hot dogs for you in the microwave. <laughs> 
couch. Back that up. I have to hear her say that again immediately. Wait, we can you... make you hot dogs oh, in, in the, the microwave. microwave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got Mark that Wade. kind of technology. <laughs> Dude, the way she's, you got to hear, the way she says Baskin Robbins is uh, uh, insane. Are you having the party? What? Are you having we're, the party? We're in talks. We want to get them I up mean, for an episode. I want to go to the party. Yeah, we'll do, we can do it, of course. Please have me at the party. Please have me at the party. My job here is to set party, serve set party. and clean up afterwards. We have full use of our kitchen, refrigerator, freezer, <laughs> coffee maker, stove, and microwave. Stave. Hot dogs for you in the microwave. Or a local pizza parlor will deliver delicious large pies for only five dollars to pizza pie. A local basket roms will be up to uh, <laughs> what? Basket roms. Five seconds. No, no, just do the five seconds back. Yeah. Five dogs a pizza pie. A local basket roms will be. <laughs> basket <laughs> roms. Basket roms. It's tough. You gotta get it's, real wordy. It's when there's bees and ends coming near uh, each other. Uh, you start yeah. panicking on the vowels in Philly. So it sounds go, like me doing a read. Basket <laughs> roms. <laughs> I, I hear myself doing it on stages. Uh, the roms. Like uh -huh. I just get rid of the vowel together. Yeah, she yeah, was yeah. probably reading it off her regular mm. piece of paper. Dude, She's but definitely she, reading. We want, like they, 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 it's, we're not making fun of. Dude, if you go look back, he did all of this shit on his own. He was buying fucking time on TV. Edited what all channel the camera. Would come on? It was like Channel Nine or whatever, yeah, or yeah, like yeah. with the local channel. Like channel Seventeen and or something. Dude, he was fucking. He's moving units. The guy's a goddamn innovator. But back in then, that was like state of the art. A coffee maker on the wall. On the yeah. wall. That's a, a microwave. That's a, that's a Mr. Coffee too. <laughs> yeah, you can make your hot dogs with with this science box. Dude, he was, he, was, <laughs> he would do all these gags where he would close like a fake hand in the in the. In the pinball machine. <laughs> Wait, do the part nine bloopers and outtakes, please. Wow, that's all right. TV off. We have four minutes of bloopers. Hi. Hello. This Hi. is seven years. Like, by the way, seven years. Hit this guy in the fucking chops. TNT yeah. significantly yeah. older from the last infomercial. You're running a goddamn empire. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to fucking weigh on you from time to time. Try to make payroll. Yeah, see, up see Obama. Ride, swallowing <laughs> yeah. You're closing deals with Baskin yeah. Robbins. You see Obama seven years later? <laughs> yeah, he's got $5 pizzas, Jay. <laughs> 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 the, the door. Yes. <laughs> Many of you have already seen our infomercial and have memorized the dialogue so many beca because of. <laughs> the dance. Dude, I bet this guy takes the mean dance. shits. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm looking at him. I bet he just takes meanies. <laughs> ah! oh, uh -huh. A complete I used to open with that. <laughs> I close. Which is now appearing at the bottom of the screen. And you can see everything we have. Women. I wonder if this guy's like currently sitting on like cash. I think so. This is so. What we found out. We have a theory. He's sitting so, on quarters. So. <laughs> <laughs> like Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, he's the dog. Dude, I think free play for you get you get a whole run of the thing. Free play for two hours. All the machines. Oh, it was like a hundred and eighty bucks or yeah. something. Crazy, but. He sells wholesale like crazy. So he goes to uh, all of the. Oh, he buys and these sells. These infomercials are just showing his. Uh, what he has. What he has. Hey, yeah, we have this. You. So they have huge inventory. And he has like, not and, antique, but like he has like serious games. Yeah. He's he, got a big operation. Yeah. Here it is. Three fifty for the exclusive private party. That's not bad. That's Two a hours. lot of hot dogs. <laughs> Two hours, three fifty. Do I want exclusively microwaved hot dogs? Are they still, are they still <laughs> microwaving the hot dogs? I'm sure. But you Yo, pay have a roller. At Yo, this pay time. me. Uh huh. Whip us up a couple. Nuke us a couple more hot dogs. Dude, so they they reached out to us and they were like, because like our fans started buying their merch and stuff. And like, dude, he was they were he was hand sending and shipping it out like that night. <sighs> so people were getting it like two days later. He fucking. Uh, he, uh, they wrote out, they've written to us, like, to his, the, the, the daughter's now running it or working, whatever. She's like, yeah, my dad made all this shit back in the day. That is my mom. She has a crazy Philly accent. Oh, damn it. That's Think of how good hilarious. that pizza was. Oh, I used to have birthday there parties there, picnic tables. Oh. oh, I bet it was good pizza, too. Free gameplay as a, as a kid? It's a, I'll tell you what, just what time was this infomercial on? Because this is something where the kids are going to beg the parents. I feel like this is a late night thing. It right? was during the day, which so you'd stay home sick from school. Kids gotcha. were home sick. Oh, man. Uh, you should, see if you can find the drag bag infomercial. And so within this, he has his nephew push a product that he invented. Really? Oh, dude, it's <laughs> fucking Which is up. basically a roller bag. Which is basically a roller, like a, like a travel roller bag. Before he invented they did, it? Yeah. It's called the drag bag. I'm tired of drag walking bag. from class to class with short, short shoulders and a broken spirit. <laughs> Try the drag bag. The drag bag. 
<laughs> it's, that's fucking crazy. Uh, I like when guys hold on to that's always been a funny like on Howard Stern, uh, Sal's stockbroker, Sal Governale. His father's an Italian guy who holds on to the idea that he thought of toppings on on pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I also do think I started Throwback Thursday. I thought I, I'm pretty sure I came up with that, and I'm not even joking. I'm pretty sure I invented social media. <laughs> Probably came up with social media. Um, uh, drag bags, uh, not surgeon. Okay. Mm. Uh, it, it's one of the infomercials. In, yeah, it's in one. Of, it's in one of the infomercials. Bring up, I don't the, know bring up the, the YouTube page again. You'll be able to see it. But there's like ten infomercials. He's because he would make them like every two years. I mean, the do, they have, do they have recent ones? It's in that one. Are they so still producing? That, are they still yeah. producing? So yeah, so if you I jump to it, so. it's probably like twenty-five minutes. Uh, keep going, I'll show you. Sorry, hot dog. If microwave you just scan, hot dog. You can't remake can, a classic. Can you just put Bobby? The, yeah, and I'll show you where it is. <laughs> I'll tell you, it looks so depressing keep now. Going. Look at that! Look at that, Jay! Oh, look that at that! Pizza. Look it's a at solid that. pizza. That was a good pizza. Woo! That's a good that pizza. was a good pizza. Wash that Fuck. down with a homemade cupcake. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh. they, they, don't, they don't even have a TV. They have a screen that comes down. Right here, right there, right there. Go back. Jump oh, back to where he's next to the jukebox. Right there. There we go. T-shirt. Keep going. It's a <clears throat> By the way, the prices are from six ninety nine and and now look. <laughs> it's a hard, hard cut. T-shirt. It's available in medium, large, and extra large. And it's only $10. He almost said small and, and didn't take that. Go back to that, too. That's pretty funny. He goes, he goes we have it in medium? <laughs> <laughs> Line. <laughs> Look, the new TNT T-shirt. It's available in medium, large, <laughs> and it's only $10. And it's available next time you come in. And God. my nephew-in-law... Who's for sure a serial killer. killer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say my nephew-in-law? Yeah, it's his nephew-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just his nephew. nephew. <laughs> 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 hey, wait. Whatever this kid goes away for, just no, no blood. <laughs> you know what? His mom asked me to watch him. I'm watching him. Put on the shirt, you psycho. Then you can go back to killing fucking rats by hand. <laughs> my associate. <laughs> and... My nephew-in-law has made this fantastic new invention, the drag bag. Let's let Jeff tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. This guy's terrifying. Dude, so They're this editing would, on the fly. Dude, so this would air, and we would... You would only get to see it once, so we would try to memorize all of the lines. So then, because it was like this thing that you couldn't find. You just caught it. You, you one, would yeah. have to be off. You would have to be at home from school, see it, <laughs> and then your all your boys knew about it. So you'd be like, "Dude, I saw it from the beginning." And my boy had this whole pitch memorized, and he can still do it at the drop of a dime. Oh, Let me hear it. it. I want to hear it. Hey, let's let Jeff tell you about it. Carrying my books in classic class meant I had a sore shoulder and a broken spirit. I knew it was something about it. That's why I invented the drag bag. With these padded wheels on the bottom, it keeps the bag from getting torn. That means my drag bag will outlast any other school bag you had. Hey, Jeff, let's look inside. Hey, that's not cheap cardboard. You're right. It's high density, high carbon it's material. Dead cats. <laughs> that's for a head. It's the heads of my enemies. <laughs> and no leaks. Yeah. Oh, look, there's Pam. <laughs> you have a hard time getting a body out of the apartment? It just says made by a famous, the famous man. Famous man. <laughs> I never noticed that. <laughs> we don't want to get a name drop. Louis Vuitton makes those. Made by a company you But this heard is of. before. Roller bags. Think I, about that. It's innovative. It's innovative. It the whole family's genius. He's tired of his broken spirit. I, I listen. <laughs> it's crazy that they did this. Like, unless this kid is rich from wheels on a bag, he's taking that vengeance out on somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We should look for dying CEOs. The head, the CEO of Toomey is, yeah. is missing. <laughs> Jeffrey, what have you done, Jeffrey? Just picking off the Bayes family one by one. Oh, I could do this for four hours, guys. I have so much fun with you guys. Uh, H. Foley, Kevin Ryan, they Thank are you. on the Are You Garbage Through the Roof Tour. Yes, sir. Uh, it's going to be coming to Town Hall in New York City on Thursday, May 9th. Get tickets for that and all the other dates. Are you garbage.com, everybody. Um, Thursday... Uh, is it next Thursday? Yeah, a week from today. We're going to be in L.A. Um, we're going to be in L.A. Do Well, we're in L.A. all week doing the show, but we are going to be live from L.A. Studios at SiriusXM, May 9th at 2 p.m. Pacific. So if you want to go to SiriusXM.com slash Netflix is a joke fest for full details and to enter so you can come watch the show. What's that? No purchase necessary. Must be a U.S. resident and 18 over. 
Well, there goes our underage party. Yeah, there goes our game night. <laughs> Punch up that live slash Robert Kelly for all of his dates this weekend. He's going to be in McCurdy's in Sarasota, Florida. That's Friday and Saturday. Uh, Atlanta, Stanford, Connecticut, Port Charlotte coming up. Again, punchup.live slash Robert Kelly for tickets. Big J is going to be at the Improv San Jose, the 3rd and the 4th. After that, he's going to be in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Irvine, California. For tickets and all of the tour dates, go to bigjcomedy.com. For San Jose, by the way, I will say there's a lot of tickets left warning. Oh, Jesus. So. <laughs> That's a big room, too. That's a big room. I think we have a lot of tickets left warning going up. So <laughs> At least you're not I'd, now. I'd buy them now before there's only a, a little bit of tickets left. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we will catch you guys when we're back. Um, oh, Monday's we'll going to be, be Monday from L.A. We'll be in Hollywood. Woo, live nice. at 2 p.m. out there. Yeah. I it's can't gonna wait. Weird. It's going to be no, fun. It's going to be awesome. 4 o'clock be done. That's it. We're fucking done. And, and then we we're just, partying. And we just dip in a pool. We should do a I'm live. skinny dip with we you. We should do a live. You, mm -hmm. Let's let our balls just fucking <laughs> hang in the water. You mean you aren't taking shirts off in the pool? <laughs> I take shirt off. You take shirt off? You're getting in a pool with a shirt on all week? I have a swim shirt. Bobby, come on, come what? on. It it's buttons better. up all the way down to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so in case I lift my arms, doesn't get In case you're doing chicken fights, you can't see my, uh, my, my gun. Uh, Bobby's wearing, are you wearing a one-piece bathing suit? Yeah, I have, I have suspenders on my bathing suit. <laughs> like curly? <laughs> He's shooting boardwalk empire. Uh, boys, we love you. Thank you love so much for doing the buddy. show. We'll catch Thank you next you time on the bonfire. Like. Boom. Smash that subscribe smash button. Smash it. Smash that like button. Smash Stay it. smashing. Smash your lady Smash, friend. Smash your guy friend. Yeah, leave a comment. And if you do this, we'll be able to keep doing more and more videos. For yeah, you. comment, and fight. We want that. Join the fight. Hashtag join the fight to get a video at SiriusXM. <laughs> Listen, choke the No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Hey. Oh, God, that's your penis. That's <laughs> not the Heimlich. That's <laughs> not the Heimlich.